Lazo. Calls his own number, runs near side. He's got room near the pylon. He's in for the touchdown. They go up the middle. Yannico breaks the tackle. He's in. Trying to drag people with him into the end zone. Touchdown, Pinkerton. Wow, that's huge. Meanwhile, play action. Roll out on third down. The throw is complete. Moss inside the 20. Down the near sideline. He's going to score the touchdown. Here's Post wow. up the middle. Post has got a seam and he's gone. Touchdown, Timberlake. Inside for touchdown number five. Here comes Baker for the sack. Who else? To take the snap, they're going to hand in the middle to Julio. Touchdown, Timberlake. Hello everyone and welcome here to Exeter. Nick and Estes, Steve Beals with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire game of the week between the Timberlane Owls and the Exeter Blue Hawks. The quarterfinals of the 2022 NHIAA Football Division I Tournament. A ticket to the semifinal on the line. The Bedford Bulldogs await the winner in next weekend's semi-final this is a rematch from earlier this season a game between these two teams that was played in class now was won by timberlake came down to the last second 27 23 ended up being the final both of these teams went on to finish up at seven and two in division one east and despite the fact that exeter lost the head-to-head -head matchup they did win the tiebreaker due to the stronger rating in the NHIAA schedule. So that is why they are the host. They are the three seed. And they look for a little bit of revenge, the Blue Hawks do, on their home field this afternoon. Of course, Timberlane, their task, Steve, is to have to beat a good team twice. Ever since, you know, Bedford had a couple of losses, got kind of demoralized by Merrimack. Boy, when you saw that, I watched some of that game in Nashville last night. They were up, ready to go. That defense was championship defense. Mm -hmm. We saw last night, Pinkerton had a little bit of a, of, of a rough start, a lot of development along the way, had some adversity, but development was happening and correcting the wrongs uh, during the year. And then Pinkerton comes in with a tremendous victory, 14-12 to last night. When you look at this game, Nick, really quickly, uh, this is a battle of two outstanding first-grade quarterbacks who can think on the field, who can get, to, get it done physically on the field, and also uh, technically extremely sound to make the, get the best out of their surrounding offensive player units. Both offensive and defensive lines are extremely well coached, extremely uh, uh, able to perform at high levels, and extremely physical. We saw that in the prior game. So I'll leave it at that at this point. There's so much more we'll talk about during the game, but this one is a beauty. It is a very difficult game, and anybody thinks that they can predict this game, uh, if, they, if they work out being right, they were lucky. Because right. to me, this is, just, th this, is, uh, this is a trump here. A lot of similarities, yes, for sure. You mentioned much. the two senior quarterbacks, Evan Pafford of Exeter, and, of course, Dom Capetta, a senior for Timberlane on the other side. Outstanding players. We spoke with Dom Capetta earlier this week, and he said this is basically a dream come true. Yeah. You know, we won the Division II championship last year. He was injured during that postseason run, but has come back strong since. But here against Division I competition, the seven wins in the regular season, the playoff win, in the preliminary round last week. All of that 
sets up really a dream moment for some of these Timberlane seniors here, a chance to go to the D1 semis with a victory here against Exeter. And, of course, Evan Paffett with DNA, football DNA in his bloodstream uh, is extremely well accomplished. Uh, he spent a lot of time refining his game. We saw uh, both of these quarterbacks, how good they are with the football as soon as they received that shotgun right. uh, or, or, uh, or, uh, or snap. Uh, both of them are outstanding with cadence. I think Evan Paffett has shown me he's as good as anybody uh, in the whole league on that. His handoffs are clean. Uh, he, he, he's stealth. Uh, that, that, the over game saw that. And you saw Dom Capetta. There's something about this guy uh, that's sort of Brady-esque in, in the sense. That's a tall order, but I'm just saying the attitude is that I'm never out of this game, and if I have to physically take this game on my shoulders, I'll do it. And mm. he brings that physical element to the game as well. Gorgeous afternoon. Here in southeastern New Hampshire, 73 degrees. The sun is out. We had a lot of rain over the last 24 hours or so, but that is behind us now. And you couldn't ask for better weather here on Veterans Day weekend. Real quick, Nick, a couple things going on here. It's just so incredible. I mean, you got BG coming out of the old Division Two. You got Timberlane coming out of the old Division Two, and you got Exeter coming out of the old Division Two. Right. And uh, you know, of course, Bedford's a new program. But those are the four teams remaining. Um, uh, well, not BG, but when you look at uh, that, three out of the four teams, other than uh, than Londonderry and Merrimack, who are always Division One, to my knowledge. Those three teams have done significantly well here in the new Division One that's yeah. developed. You got to give them a lot of credit, and it's a lot about the coaches and yeah. the culture. And speaking of the old Division Two, we are now on the 25th anniversary of Bill Ball's first championship team here at Exeter. That was back in the fall of 1997 in the old Division Two against Bishop Girton. Exactly. That right. team is, I guess, going to get together in the upcoming weeks for a 25th anniversary celebration of course it's veterans day weekend as well we want to tip our hat to all those Amen. who have served we appreciate it and there'll be a special moment of silence coming up here at exeter in honor of all the veterans nationwide no but not everybody in this world loves freedom and it costs lives and it costs you a lot met uh, literally hundreds of thousands of lives uh, at young ages uh, for our benefit so we can live in the sort of utopia that we live in here as far as freedoms. Let's all hope that we can continue that on. All right. When we come back, we get ready to roll. We've got the national anthem. We've got the coin toss. Both bands are here. And, again, a Veterans Day moment of silence as well. It all builds up to the kick coming your way at the top of the hour here. 1 o'clock Eastern, quarterfinal matchup between Exeter and Timberlane. Next, you are watching Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. It's presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. I'm Travis Kelsey, and this is Zen Water. The perfect <laughs> alkaline water for sports hydration and the only water that's in a bottle that prevents ocean pollution. Ultra pure alkaline water in a bottle that prevents ocean pollution. Why would you drink anything else? Seriously, why would you drink anything else? 
New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and Girls.NHTomahawks.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. Don't waste another season. Raise more funds than ever before and become another football program in New Hampshire that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit MG sportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Well, the Exeter Blue Hawks just received a warm welcome from this Exeter crowd here at Bill Ball Stadium. They are in their home navy blue uniforms and now starting to settle in along the near side. Timberlane on the far side in their white road uniforms with that maroon Pants and helmets. There is longtime head coach Bill Ball, 30 years on the sidelines, multiple championships. His team on the short list of contenders, Steve, year in and year out, and are one win away yet again from the semifinals. We'll send it down to the field for the national anthem. Well, there again is the national anthem performed by the Exeter High School Marching Band. They are seated to our right, just below the media here in the press box. The Owls, they have brought their crowd with them as well, taking up most of that far side bleacher, a short ride up Route 111 from Plastow. Again, a rematch from week number five. That was a game that really came down to the last snap. Exeter was stopped just shy, and Timberlane was able to, able to hold on to a 27-23 to victory. Again, Exeter wrestled away the division, or I'm sorry, the conference championship, the regular season crown on the final week when Portsmouth, <clears throat> quote-unquote, upset Timberlane to hand the Owls their second loss. That put the, the two teams at a tie, 7-2, and two, and again, the, the top the top tiebreaker is not head-to-head. -head. It is based upon rating, which comes, of course, mathematically, based on strength of schedule, essentially. But all that is out the window here as these two teams are ready for four 
grueling quarters and what's expected to be a physical football game here this afternoon. Yeah, it's a hard one for me to handle, uh, Nick. You have no control over what your schedule is, so it's out of your control, but you do have control over the head-to-head matchup. So for me, that's a hard one, but you know what? When your rules are set, yep. uh, they're set at the beginning of the year, and everybody understands that, and at the end of the day, uh, if you lose the Portsmouth at the end of the year, that's, you know, that's was in your control as well. So at the end of the day, it probably, like you said, it really doesn't matter. Right. Uh, and I think both of these teams are going to enjoy another head-to-head matchup uh, just for the game itself. But when you elevate what this game means, and we could see last night what that game meant uh, to, to both teams, win or lose, uh, this one's a big one. And I, could, uh, I couldn't choose who's going to win this game publicly, privately, uh, b- because they're just so well. So uh, such a great matchup. Yeah. Well, you see there, both teams ready to go. Coin toss in the books. Coach Ball on one sideline. Of course, Kevin Fitzgerald, longtime head coach at this point, 15 years on the job. Fresh off a Division II title. They were able to hold off Milford in the final last year. and A lot of that team, of course, came back. But still, I think a 7-2 and two regular season uh, surprised at least yeah. some people based on how well they played throughout the nine-week campaign. Yeah, when you look at Coach Fitzgerald, one of the things I like is the relationship that he has with his players, number one. And then all of a sudden, when his team runs through a period during a game uh, and they're running through some rough spots, how he manages to get the, get the adjustments needed to turn it around. He's a, he's a veteran, even though he's a relatively young guy. Here we go, Nick. All right, Timberlane will receive the dangerous sophomore Matt Williams, one of the two return men back deep. This one headed to the near side. It'll be handled by Jaden Wongi. Wongi going to tiptoe up to the 30 along the near sideline and lean forward up to about the 33. Stopped by Evan DeLore, junior with a good tackle on special teams. But I think Coach Fitzgerald will take the starting field position, first and 10 at their own 32. Yeah, chose the outside uh, lane, Nick. Uh, uh, and uh, and the containment that uh, Exeter adjusted to was very quick. So good job there, but I'm sure, as you said, uh, Timberlane's fine at the 33-yard line. It'll be very interesting to see how the trenches go in this game, as always. See who's going to take control early. All right, the tail is Mwangi. As Dan Post, unfortunately, doesn't look like he's going to get to go here this afternoon. Post played outstanding last week. As Mwangi is snubbed for a loss here of three, it'll be second down and 13. But Post scored three touchdowns in that first round victory over Concord, injured in that fourth quarter, and again is on the sidelines to start things here. Yeah, he's a spark plug of, uh, of the uh, backfield, Nick. He is fast as lightning, and he runs through holes like a rocket. They're going to miss him today, but you know what? Injuries are part of football. You've got to adjust, and you've got to make sure your offense is uh, built up to the highest level it can be. Second and 12, quarterback draw. This is Capetta. Lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a couple. One of the big bodies up front for Exeter, Ryan Graney, the senior captain. In on the stop, it'll be third down and 10. Yeah, that, I love the four down lineman set on defense, Nick, and uh, these guys are very active. Uh, their defensive ends, uh, Coach Ball's defensive ends, always do a terrific job. Um, and uh, as does the Bedford uh, defensive ends, do a terrific job year in, year out. Four receivers set on third and 10. Capetta trying to escape. Graney breathing down his neck. Capetta. It's going to be wrapped up and taken down at the 35 inbounds. Only a gain of two. So it looks like the Exeter defense Held wins up. the first battle of the afternoon, forcing the three and out. Yeah, great job. Capetta uh, thought he might have had a lane to get uh, a little bit more there, but uh, great job by, uh, oh boy, there's two sides of this. Ryan Graney, as you said, Nick, great job chasing him down with some support coming from the right side. Mwangi does a little bit of everything for the Owls, including punt. He's got his toes on the 20-yard line, takes a chest-high snap, gets off a line drive kick, wobbling kick, take a bounce on the other side of the 50, roll inside the Blue Hawk 40, and will be downed without a return at the 39-yard line. Hard to say. That looked more like a crosswind, but that may have uh, tempered that ball's uh, distance a little bit there, Nick, but they did get a good bounce, and... 
Uh, now Exeter, uh, so far, winning the field position by about 10 yards on their turn to go on offense here. A little bit breezy. Yep. Seems that's always the case here at Exeter, just miles away from the seacoast. I'll take it, though. 73 degrees, gorgeous. All right, first series for Evan Pafford and this Blue Hawk offense. The senior running the T under center. Hand off. No, fake. They're going to roll him out and throw. It's complete near side. Good move. This is Ethan Moss, the senior, made a man miss and picks up a big first down on the opening snap for this offensive unit. Watch the whole defense here respond to Pafford's fake. He does such a good job. There's just something about this guy, the way he shields the ball, and he throws his runner a dart. So it was very easy for him to make a, a nice, clean reception and get some yards after the catch right there, and then he went on further and did some on his own. Yeah, did some damage after the catch. A couple of cuts, a big play there for Moss. Second play from scrimmage. They hand it to him directly. Left side give, not going to get much. Stood up in the hole. Yep. Does cross Still the 35 battling. down to about the 33 when they whistle him down. Going to get five. Pick up second down. On the other side there for Timberlane Langlois on the stop. That's Nick Langlois, the big senior defensive tackle. So very early, uh, Evan Paffett, Coach uh, Ball, uh, as a unit, are going to be attacking out beyond the, out by the numbers there, Nick. Uh, I don't know if they see something or saw something on film, but... We'll see if that's a pattern as we go forward. Just over three minutes gone by, first quarter. Pafford, a long count, play fake. Another rollout, eyes downfield, going to tuck and run. He's got a lead block. He's at the 25, and he brings two men with him. Down about the 22, another first down for Exeter. I'll tell you. It's Braden Paris eventually on the stop, but Pafford Watch off this. to a great start Watch mechanically this. here. Watch this rollout. Just uh, balls back where it belongs. Looking downfield first, which you like. That affects the – he may have no intention of passing, but he has the ball back to make the cornerbacks and defensive backs have to stay with their receivers, which is what opened him that running lane. What a terrific job this young man has done. He is developing. He's going to be a college player. Exeter on the march here, first and ten. Aiden McGinley's first carry. The big back is inside the 20. Bulls his way down Whoa. about – the 16-yard line. McGinley, one of these veteran seniors. Meanwhile, the game's first penalty. Personal foul. Appears to be on the way. A late hit against Timberlane. Yeah, actually, it was unnecessary roughness, I think, Nick. Uh, if you watch on replays here, you'll see him after the play uh, is well over and the whistle's blown. There's a pull down here. You've got to keep your composure in these games. The emotion's high. Now watch this. I think on the yeah, left pulls side him there, down yeah. the left side there, yeah. Yeah, you got to keep your composure. Nolan Bleakley went flying. Not yep. sure which Timberlane player it was who gave him a shove, but it's a costly penalty. As we hear for the first time from our referee, James Pressure. Yeah, he was right there. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it in the far distance of the field. Um, but yeah, uh, he was the distance, so they'll spot it just yeah. outside the eight-yard line. And now a first and goal on the way as the Blue Hawks look to strike first. Four minutes in. Again, the T formation facing what looks like a four-man front. It's a pitch near side. Trying to cut it up inside right, is Michael defense. DeTore. Nice defense right there. DeTore just had nowhere to go. He was looking for a little seam to slide through here, you'll see. And then it just kind of caved in on him. Oh, nice job. It looks like John's getting right on it, John. Sorry. And number eight involved in there with Timberlane, uh, Braden Paris. What a terrific job he did. Couple of tackles already for yep. Paris. Caleb Mobley, another senior for Timberlane in there as well. Second and goal from the seven. Zator, his first carry a moment ago. He missed some time earlier this season with an injury. Pafford on the rollout. Escapes Moley, escapes the second defender, and then breaks the five yard line before he's planted. At about the four. Yeah, he was almost brought down around the 16-yard line there, Nick, but he fought his way loose. But then the swarm defensive Timberlane, we've seen it every game we've covered, uh, comes back and does not let him in the end zone. That's because everybody on the Owls are moving towards the football, and that's what they're going to need to do today. If This is a big stand, big play in the game already with 639 counting in first quarter. Yeah, a big unit here as Graney comes back on. From the sidelines, going to light end, uh, line up as a second tight end here on the right side. Got a wing as well to the near side on third and goal. 
to the air. Wide open touchdown, Exeter. Wow. Ethan Moss, nobody around, an easy grab. He's in the end zone, and Exeter is going to cap off a 61-yard drive with a four-yard touchdown pass from Paffer to Moss. Yeah, that's an impressive first offensive drive there by the Blue Hawks, Nick. But uh, there's something going on here where they're – Paffer just, again, I, I, I can't help it. He literally puts the ball in the breadbasket, pulls it out, and forces that whole defense to get drawn inside. And then there's literally nobody on them covering that. Somebody's got to get that release. And look at Paffer. Delivers a strike. He is on so far today with two receivers, right. which you never really want to happen. But you've got two receivers within a couple yards. I believe 88 is supposed to be a little deeper. It was 88, I believe. Yeah, it was grainy. Yeah, he's supposed to be a little deeper in the end zone, or one of them is anyway. High snap, but a good hold. And Impressive. the kick from Ethan Moss is up and good. Holder, by the way, is Pafford. And Pafford took that one up nearly by the face mask as we get another look. Moss, one of the stronger legs in the state. You see the elevation on that kick. 7-0 Exeter midway through this first quarter. Home fans who are still filing in, by the way, smiling early on here this afternoon. Yeah, I think Coach Ball is uh, smiling uh, underneath there. He's not going to show that. But uh, I've watched him for a lot of time. When he's got that straight walk right along down the line, very determined, uh, all business, directing his, uh, his coaches and uh, his support team there. Uh, he's got to be pleased what he's seen so far for, from his offense and defense this year, so far in the game. 30 years as head coach. He's also been, been, the, athletic, done that. Yep. been, been the athletic director, served for a moment as the boys lacrosse head coach. And, of course, he's the director of officiating for the state as well. So a man of many hats, but I think this, this spot he's in is his favorite, the head coach, the yep. head football coach of the Exeter Blue Hawks. Meanwhile, this one up in the air. It's a short kick from Moss. Going to take a bounce before Mwangi handles at the 20. Across the 25, spun around at the 30. Almost ends exactly. up around the 33-yard line. Same starting field position on drive number two as drive number one. Timberlay went three and out after receiving the game's opening kickoff. Yeah, we'll see. Timberlane's got to get it together here. When you're away and you get scored on first, extremely important to respond in kind very very early uh we saw that in the game last night there was uh that uh, that the uh, cardinals were not able to you know close it on the first run there we'll see what tim Lane and the owls can do here i'm going to spread it here two receivers each side capetta out of the gun on first and ten the throw is low but caught on the far side that's trey baker the short-handed yep. senior nice job it's been really there capetta's top target most of the season baker Able to pull it in for a six-yard gain to set up second and four at their own 40-yard line. If you would ever told me I'd be up in the press box here on November 12th, right, uh, feeling warm, yeah. I, I, I would never have believed it. No, but, uh, 73 at game time. Again, the sun is out. Gorgeous here. Yeah. I know one of our camera people up top is pretty happy. Mm. That's Kristen Beals, of course. Meanwhile, DeJulian. nowhere to go. DeJulian on his first carry. Ed... To Julian trying to find some room on that far edge did not and now a third down coming up yeah it looks to me the defensive line is matching up very well against this outstanding offensive line of Timberlane they're doing a good job getting separation but also controlling the line of scrimmage getting across the line of scrimmage and flowing to the ball uh, with a great deal of uh, symmetry and it's uh, it's having an effect that's just never able there hasn't been an ability yet this early on for Tim Lane to get anything rolling. Tackle by Owen Simon. Meanwhile, a couple of Blue Hawks may have jumped. They, they do back. get back on. And now the snap and the give to Julio. Not going to get there. There's nothing there. Again, Simon and company close down the hole. No gain on that third down carry. And now a fourth down and it looks like four. Yeah. On the way, Coach Fitzgerald going to punt the football here for the second time. Going to punt it, Nick, but that's awful fast. Uh, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a quick punt after receiving the ball initially, and that puts a lot of stress on your defense. They barely got off and be able to get a, a splash of water, and they got to get back out in the field again. And it's 70. It's not 40. Two consecutive three and outs. Yes. Not the ideal start. Meanwhile, Mwangi, a couple of steps to his right, gets off a high-arcing punt down that far sideline. It's going to land out of bounds. 
Boy, they're going to give them, going to give the Timberlane That's a good, a good punt. spot. That's a good punt. Good punt and a good spot as well for Timberlane. Yeah. Thought it may have gone out of bounds around the, the uh, you know, the uh, 26, 27 yard line, but the official was right there. Right in front of him. It right landed. in front of it. Yep. So Seemingly right there. I hard think, to tell from here. I think it's within a yard or so either way. But yep. Exeter. Started drive number one at their own 39-yard line. Going to start things here at their own 20. Uh, just outside of four minutes to go in this first quarter. This officiating crew is very active here. Everybody, you can tell, knows their assignments. Communicating back and forth with each other. A lot of veterans. Yes. Amongst this five-man crew led by referee James Pressure. Pitch. Detour. May have stumbled a bit upon receiving the toss. Going to end up losing... Maybe a couple here. Cam Zimbrowitz, one of these seniors, many seniors, veteran seniors on the Owls, sneaks into the backfield. It's a one-yard loss. Second down, 11. Yeah, the Owls' defense here has got to come up big to give uh, Capetta and his uh, offensive unit uh, an opportunity to get out there again. And if you're going to do it, that's how to do it with the first down. On second and 11. Timberland showing extra pressure. Going to get after Paffer. Going to roll. Going to throw. Wow. Caught by Graney. And the big tight end able to hang on for about a 10-yard gain. Very close to the marker. They're going to give it to him? It is. It's a first down Exeter. Yeah, he looks like a tight end. He is a tight end. Paffer, great job stretching it out, which gives him what a terrific job. Off, you know, Great job by Trey Baker to try to bring it down, but that pass was just on pure the money. on the money. Yep. Baffert off to a good start. Touchdown pass already to the senior's credit. He's got another first and 10 here from his own 30-yard line. It's like a five-man front here for the Timberlane defense. Up the middle and a first down. Baker. Another 11-yard carry. First carry for Desmond Rugg is... Coach Ball continuing to cycle through these running backs. Look, they get that fullback through the hole so quickly, and then you've also got uh, Evan Pafford, who does such a great job pretending he's still got the ball, and he slices through that uh, interior part of the line, and he's well into the secondary. And I'll tell you, Trey Bake is getting a lot of tackles, but they're not the tackles he's looking for. They're not by line of scrimmage. They're uh, deep into their own territory. Baker, one of the two safeties, standing near the first down marker. On first and 10 to Tor, not much. Wrapped up almost immediately by Caleb Moley. Yeah, nice job. He's off to a good start himself here for Timberlane as we move inside of three minutes first quarter. 7-0 Exeter out in front. Really important for Timberlane to be able to get a stop, not deep in their own territory. Uh, so uh, it puts it in. Once it gets into four-down territory, you know Coach Ball is going to use it. Uh, it's not four down territory yet, so it's a little bit of sense of urgency if they can to maintain it in the three down territory uh, while Exeter has the ball. Try right. to force a kick. They're going to stack this box. Yep. Pitch, rug, showing the speed to the outside, knocked out of bounds, shoved into the home bench, very close to the marker. It's another 11 yard pickup and a first down for the Blue Hawks. Yeah, um, starting to get some chunk runs here. Three straight, well, three straight 11-yard gains. One of those was through the air, but Rugg, after successfully picking up the first down, going to grab yeah. a quick drink of water here. As again, Coach Ball, that's one of the strengths of Exeter. They love using multiple ball carriers. Ian O'Kane, 57 of uh, Exeter, and uh, obviously uh, Ray, Ryan Graney, they got way out ahead on the block. They had a terrific job. It's that right side of the line. Inside give, Rugg shows you what he can do on the inside. Follows left guard, and again, the magic number seems to be 11. Is that a first down? No. They're going to spot him just shy, it just like. Second and inches. A little short. Well, the gashing continues here on this drive for Exeter as we move inside of two minutes first quarter, but clock killing yeah 152 left in the first quarter all you really remember in this quarter is exeter's offense on the field that's had, exactly what they want had the ball the entire way except mm -hmm. for six snaps of offense on the other side for timberlane mcginley big hole and he's gonna rumble and tumble 
for another first down and then some inside the 25 to the 24. Watch McGinley here in the replay. Two hands on the football. We talked about that last night. Don't try to stretch extra yardage. Go for the yardage that's there. But in first and foremost, maintain possession. It of, of managing the possession of the football first and mm. then taking the yardage that's given to you. Gary Schivel giving credit on the tackle. First and ten, Blue Hawks looking for the red zone. Trying to add to their 7-0 lead. Play fake, Pafford on the rollout, near side. Going to tuck, going to run. Trots inside the 20, skips his way down to the 16 before he's knocked out of bounds inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Watching uh, a quarterback right now that's developed throughout the year. Uh, we saw him the very end of last year get in some games, and uh, if you take him today versus where he was at that time last year, uh, it's just an incredible development. Uh, takes coaching, takes a commitment by yeah. the player, off season when they know they're going to have that opportunity. And Evan Pafford is just doing a terrific job in all phases of being a quarterback and um, multi-sport athlete. Multi-sport we'll see him athlete, yep. On the court this winter with the basketball team, and we've spoken with Coach Ball about his relationship with the senior and. It's as tight, basically, with him as he's been with any quarterbacks over the last three decades. Going to go inside to Rugg, and this time the door is shut. Zambrowitz able to wrestle him down at about the 12-yard line. Timberlane's got to stand strong here in this situation. Uh, you know, three points is one thing, but letting going down 14 and nothing away. Uh, this defense now has been on the field, I mean, almost all of the first quarter. And like I said earlier, 40 degrees, Nick. Starting to see some thing. hands on the hips already. Absolutely. I understand. 70 degrees. It's a little, you know, climate's a little extra warm right now. It's the warmest it's been in a long time. Yeah. Since probably maybe early October. Play fake. Quick throw. Catch made. Moss stood up on the sideline. Finished off by Baker just shy of the six-yard line. Give, give Timberlane and Owls credit there. They were able to go out there. And, and, and again, this is something that Coach Fitzgerald uh, you got to give this guy a lot of credit. When you see this, now you're going to see two defenders taking that uh, outside receiver, and they're right out there in position. And that's just great job by Trey Baker. And who was he? Was 25? Was I couldn't tell who the other number was. Sorry about Maybe that. Maybe it was Shivel 15. Was a Shivel. Nice job. But most importantly, from upstairs and downstairs, you got to got a got a conference, and you got to get that situation taken care of. And they did a good job there. Third down and two. Ball at the seven yard line. Exeter looking for the five. With 23 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Big play. Play fake. Coach Ball wants to go back to the air. He's got a man wide open. Yeah. It's Moss for his second touchdown catch of this first quarter. Yeah, another breakdown, Nick, right there. You've got three defenders with two receivers. Two receivers were, were, were with uh, Graney uh, deep into the uh, end zone, Nick. You're going to see it right here. The, and he's got to come up and cover that, that uh, lower receiver. Look at you got two back there. He's got to come up. So these are just well-designed plays. Now watch here. You're going to see below if we get that in the... Yeah, see, you got one, two, three defenders there. One of them has got to come up and take the, the, the short receiver. Kick from Moss up and good. 14-0. Exeter off to a dream start here. Yes. On their home field, just 18 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. Two touchdown drives. One of 61 yards. That one we just saw there, an 80-yard touchdown march. Both scoring drives capped off by the combination of Pafford to Moss. A four-yard touchdown and then a seven-yard touchdown. Both extra points off the right foot of Moss as well. Yeah, what you're seeing here is uh, there's a problem the Owls have. It isn't like the pass is being fully defended, but the running isn't, so you can work on the run. Right now, the defense is being uh, beaten on both the pass and the run by this Exeter offense. They clearly have found and exploiting that right side of, of, the, uh, of the passing lanes out there, uh, and they're putting multiple receivers and flooding that zone, and the uh, defensive backs are, are having some confusion of who's got who. And they've been very successful with it. Pafford unofficially 5-for-5. Five five. Yeah, he's looking really Through good the today. air in that first quarter. Moss's kick angles towards the near sideline. Fielded on the run by Mwangi. Up across the 30. Skips to the 35. 
And it's wrapped up at about the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. A good return by the senior. So Matt Williams, I believe 20 is the other. They're deep, kick, kicking away from him. Kicking away from him yeah. big time. And uh, so it, it, it appears there's a, there's a very definitive and constructive game plan that Coach Ball has put together that he's sticking to. And uh, I would imagine he's not going to leave it because it's working for him just wonderfully right now uh, with a 14 nothing lead um, even just in the first quarter. So Timberlay, meanwhile, seeking their first first down after two consecutive three and outs. They'll begin drive number three with 12 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Capetta near side. Yanked down by O'Kane. Had an open hole, but it, the, it just closed up very, very quickly. The defense is just swarming to the football. Three-yard gain, quickly. second and seven. When we come back, standing ovation for an outstanding first quarter. Exeter 14, Timberlay nothing after one. Owls look to respond when we come back. You are watching coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Division I football quarterfinals right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. It's presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Timberlane opening up the second quarter, facing a second and six, and Dom Capetta is dragged down at the 40-yard line after a gain of only one. This Exeter defense swarming here in this first half. They force two consecutive Timberlane three and outs. They're hoping to do it again here on what looks like a third and eight coming up facing the Owls. 14-0 Exeter. Two lengthy Blue Hawk Drives offensively, both resulted in touchdowns. Pafford to Moss, the key combination on both scoring drives. All right, third and eight. Capetta with time, fans it left side, and he's got a man complete for a first down. That's Mwangi. Makes the catch, gets both feet down, and then steps into his own bench there after, what, a 10-yard gain. Timberlane in Exeter territory for the first time at the 48-yard well, line. Well, we heard Coach Ball on Gridiron on Thursday night talking about Capetta's capability of running to the right and then as he's moving to the right, passing bullets uh, across the field. Mm. And you saw that right there, the strength on the arm. And yeah, Tom Capetta injured during last season's postseason run at the Division II level. Timberlane able to go on and win it in his honor, but... To Capetta's credit, able to come back after working hard in the offseason. And here he is, showing you what he can do on first and ten. Going to weave his way for another first down inside the Exeter 35-yard line of the 34. Very important here for them to respond. It's never too late when you're this early in the game. But yeah. you got you to gotta lessen or... or, or not allow that hole to get too deep going into the second half. So Maybe a touchdown saving tackle there by the safety, Noah Bleakley. I think so. Got him just below the knee and just in time. 12-yard pickup. Timberlake. Starting to pick up some momentum here after consecutive first downs, first and 10. Out of the gun, the give is to Liam Corman, the wow. freshman. He's swallowed up in the backfield. What a close down by he and I believe number seven. Aiden McGinley, what a terrific job those two did closing it down. And then it's Drew Hanno who finishes him off, the senior. Fired up after, after the tackle. When you see a play get foiled this quickly in this dominant fashion, it usually means they've rehearsed it, which means they probably saw it on film 
They read a key properly, and that's what all preparation for a game and knowing your assignments in every play, reading and reacting according to your keys, that's probably what happened right there because that was just a terrific job. Two-yard loss. Yeah. Sets up second and 12. Two minutes in, second quarter. Exeter looking to protect a 14-0 lead here. Timberlane trying to get on the board. On second and 12 from the Blue Hawk 36. Capetta looks left. Going to throw. He's got, he's down got the space. Far side. Wow. Touchdown! It's Mwangi on the other end. A perfect strike from Capetta. 36-yard hookup. And the Owls get themselves in the end zone and on the board. And the extremely large uh, visiting crowd from the Owls is going wild over there right now. They know how important that is. But you've got to stay composed here. It's very important. We saw what extra points mean last night, Nick. In a playoff game, they've got to stay calm and they've got to get this through the uprights. Because they are. it's not a touchdown six, but you've got to get the seven to keep up with the Hawks with two sets of seven here already on the board. Timberland trying to make it a seven-point difference. High snap, good hold by Baker. And, and they the did kick it. is up and perfect off the right foot of Harrison Bloom, the senior. A pretty good response there by Timberland is the 36-yard pass, gorgeous to watch. But, but gorgeous because of who threw it. Look at the situation right there, the power in that arm and the separation. Uh, Long he got him that by a long couple he of got steps. there by a couple of steps, and and you know what a quarterback has to do is lead the ball against good defensive backfield, and Exeter always has a great defensive backfield. Now you're going to get a great view. Look at the separation he had, and and literally didn't even had to break a stride. It was right there. Got what the, a terrific throw! Got the step on Sean Delello, the yep. junior cornerback so hard to stay with that when you see a quarterback break to one side you're kind of looking well do i got to get coverage backside coverage across the field and uh then capetta just throws a, a a monster pass and wang has got some sneaky speed yes he does as we've seen he's been part of the kick return game all season for coach fitzgerald one of the better tacklers defensively in that secondary and oh yeah he's gonna have to fill in a tailback today on <laughs> On occasion as well for the Busy injured, young man. injured Dan Post. So, yeah, Mwangi doing a little bit of everything and doing it all well in this first half. Meanwhile, DeTore going to back pedal and watch this one end up in the end zone for a touchback. That's a good kick what, what from a, Bloom. What a difference a quarter makes. <laughs> Very similar to the game last night, Nick, uh, in the sense that the Cardinals just seemed like they just couldn't get things going, seemed to be playing at a different speed, and then the second quarter, uh, yeah. Coach pumped them up, and uh, they came out, and they actually held. Uh, same start, really. Yeah, same type of a start. Pickerton built up a 14 nothing lead. Two touchdown drives in that first quarter. Two three and outs, I believe, for BG before their third touchdown, uh, excuse me, third offensive drive of the day resulted mm -hmm. in their first touchdown. And then it was, it was more even moving forward. Astros prevailed last night 14-12. What a game. And will await the winner of this afternoon's contest between Londonderry and Merrimack. The winner here between Timberlane and Exeter will host Bedford next week. Here's a toss to Rugg on first down. Rugg able to find some separation. Shivel going to wrap him up around the shoulder blades. But long after the first down was surrendered, he's out to the 45-yard line, a big pickup of nearly 20. Watch the lead blocking up front here on the left-hand side. You're going to see it. Look at the pull. Then seven doesn't, even though he gets knocked down, he does an incredible seal right there, and that's what gives him the acceleration that he needed to get through the line, and what a run. What a 20, set of blocking. 25-yard gain. Execution to high level here. Now to the 45, first down. First and 10, five-man front. McGinley going to find a hole across midfield, dragged yeah. down by Paris, but not before picking up another eight yards. I have no doubt Coach Ball had some severe no lunch for a month or something going on here uh, if these guys didn't hold on to that football with two hands. Because what I'm seeing, look at the grass, ten fingers, two arms on the football through the whole process all the way down. That is critical in big games because turnovers, when you start getting out of this wire, teams are too, par too much parity. You've you got to avoid turnovers, and that's part of the process. Pretty good inside seal by the guard there, too, yes. the junior Arthur Como. Coach Ball continuing to cycle in offensive linemen. That's been kind of his M.O. for the last yep. several seasons. Has the depth up front. Keeps guys fresh. 
And as a result, perhaps we get another first down here as Ethan Moss moves the sticks down to the Timberlane 41. One of the things that coaches and players of teams on offense like is they like to control the flow of the game on the pace. And if you notice, uh, Timberlane isn't doing anything defensively yet to take them out of, that, of the Exeter's pace. They've got to do that. Got to change some things up here. Force a timeout, something, slow the game down for them. I was looking for their first stop of the afternoon. McGinley right side on first and 10, still fighting for that extra inch. Yep. Down to about the 36-yard line after a gain of nearly watch five. The, watch the right side. 55 gets taken out of the play. The, the, the guards are coming out and hitting the linebacker core square of the Owls. And, and a lot of that is because of the stealth stuff that's going on behind with, with the handoffs. It's so difficult to pick up. They're trying to read it, Nick and they can't find the ball, and what that does is gives the guards a free shot to drive the, uh, the uh, linebacker core back. It's that extra half second that Yes, while you're trying to difference. read. Yeah. Second and five, McGinley calls his own number, but he's going to get tripped up nice along tackle. the line of scrimmage. That's Mwangi. Yep. Got him below the knee. Limits the damage to just a two-yard pickup. Looks like third and three on the way. Get a look at the replay. Wong able to break down and hang on for dear life to that left leg. Big stop. And now Timberlake looking for their first third down stop of this first half with nearly five minutes gone by in the second quarter. Yeah, when you convert third down, especially over one or two yards, that's when you get into threes and four third down conversions, it's really tough on the defense. Third and three. Five-man front for Timberlake. Long count here. Pafford going to give straight up the middle. That's Rugg. I think he's short. I think so. They're going to mark him somewhere between the 31 and 32-yard line. You're right, About Nick. a half yard shy. The nose of the football a few inches away from the 31-yard line. No doubt what's going to go on here. This is clear. At, uh, Blue Hawk four-down territory, the way they play the game, especially at home. It's dry. Midway through the second quarter, offense stays on the field here on fourth down and inches. That play action's been working really well. I'm wondering if Coach Ball will pull the trigger on that. I doubt it, but it could happen. Toss, near side, rug finds the hole in a first down. He's been big for them so far today. Scissored by both Motley and Shivel, but not before a two-yard gain and a fresh set on the way for Exeter. Pafford with a little bit of limp coming off the field. I don't know if he got zing there on that tackle earlier or what, but... Yeah, if you look, when you see a defense catching runners, that's never a good sign, and that's what's going on right now. The, the Kimberly and Owls are not afraid to hit. That's not the issue. They're having trouble finding the ball and picking it up. And they've got to, st they, they, they can't come up until they see it. First and 10. Back to McGinley this time. No running room at all. A little different there that a, a nice job. Uh, off, uh, defensive linemen uh, were able to uh, control the line of scrimmage there, and the linebackers were able to see it. You de d defensive linemen can really, good defensive linemen can make linebackers look really, really good or at least allow them to be good. That's and Austin Patton on the tackle. Yeah, there's big big number something there under that pile that just held the whole line of scrimmage uh, for the Owls. Nice job. They're going to need to do more of that if they're going to stop this potent exit or running attack. Second and ten. <clears throat> Another long count from Pafford. A little bit of a jump, but Timberland able to get back. And Time now out. Pafford is going to call a timeout. It's the first timeout either way here with inside of five minutes to go in this second quarter. Our broadcast is brought to you by Beals Insurance, locations in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance gets you the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. By New Hampshire iPhone Repair. It's done while you wait, and it's backed by their lifetime warranty. Now it's six locations in southern New Hampshire and on the seacoast. Visit NHIPhoneRepair.com. Also by the New Hampshire Tomahawks. Showcase and development for college lacrosse. 
Visit nhtomahawks.com and also girls.nhtomahawks.com. And finally, by Ghost Energy. Ghost is a sports nutrition brand that empowers users to be seen beyond the walls of the gym. So be seen with Ghost Energy. Nick and Astis, Steve Beals with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire coverage of this 2022 NHIAA Division I football quarterfinals. Winner will take on Bedford in next week's semis. 14-7, Exeter out in front. Looking for a third touchdown on their third drive of the afternoon. On second and ten, they're back to the ground. Near side, Rugg trying to find the edge, not going to, as he's ridden down by Liam Kelly, the sophomore for Timberlake. Starting to make some adjustments here on attacking the line of scrimmage defensively a little bit more, and instead of trying to put your head down and drive through without the vision, defensive line is, is starting to use that upper movement with their arms. Watch them. They're starting to stand them up, right, starting to scrape and shed. And as a result of that, it's starting to improve for them a little bit. But we'll see if it stands because exit has been able to respond to almost anything that, uh, that the Owls have thrown at them. But that's good structural play that's going to help them. Four minutes to go before halftime. A third down and eight. Big play here. Plenty of time. The throw is high oh, and tipped and incomplete. Trying to find Moss, but a number of white jerseys in the area, including Trey Baker, who may have gotten a piece there. Oh, I think there's no doubt. Watch Trey here. I think we're going to get a good view coming across. And 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 just front arm, arm hammer there. Just great job. Had the backhand on the, on the back of the player. And then knocks it loose, gains leverage. That's not going to be called if he's looking at at the uh, at the football at the, at the football coming at him. So that's well, just a great the defensive is, play. Can Timberlane do it again? I don't Sexeter's know. Exeter's going to go for it here. How big is this play, Nick? At fourth down. I mean, fourth and eight. Pafford under center, another long count. Takes the snap, play fake, back to throw. He's got time. Now he's going to roll right. In some trouble, trying to find the sticks. Paris going to ride happen. him out of bounds and. He's going to end up short. Timberlane gets the stop they were hoping for. The Owls forced the turnover on downs. And it'll bring the Timberlane offense back onto the field at their own 24-yard line. No question, Nick. When your offense can score, that's important. And it helps drive a team, and it did. That got the defense motivated. But when your defense can take a stand as it approaches the, end zone, at the uh, red zone, this is going to be big for the Owls. It changes the dynamic. They chased Paff. It looked like he... Uh, Got flushed out there by Got Nick Got flushed out. That's a great way of putting it, Nick, yep. and uh, just driven out bounds. And, uh, and the uh, defensive back did a great job staying with the receiver and then coming up just when Paffett had committed himself where he couldn't throw anymore and came up and uh, drove him outside. Nice job. Took the right angle to the sideline. He absolutely did. Paris forcing the turnover. So here comes turnover on downs. Here comes Exeter. They go to DeLonghi. Oh, DiGiulio, excuse me. Yep. Going to twist his way through the hole and end up at about the 28-yard line after a gain of four to set up second and six. Clock continuing to tick now, three and a half to go. Yeah, well, Cap Cap Capetta's arm has been able to keep them uh, close enough. To where it, they're within one score with 323 left. That's not bad considering the flow of this game in the first half, and they've got the football with 318. If they can move the sticks a couple times, that's just going to go a long way of driving the clock out and going in with time to adjust. They got on the board with a 36-yard touchdown pass. Here's a toss on second down, and Julio runs out of room very quickly. That's Pafford. Talk about all the things he does as the quarterback of this unit, but Coach Ball has told us yeah. he's just as good <laughs> defensively, and he shows it there. I think he is uh, just as good, but, boy, a quarterback is a hard thing to find. Uh, and, boy, he's got a lot of tools. I, I don't know. Uh, well, he shed the block well. He makes the tackle a couple of yards in the backfield. Sets up now a third and ten for Timberlane. Yeah, this this officiating crew, uh, Nick, is very Just efficient today. Just one penalty today. so far. One penalty. They're letting the guys play, and the penalty that they called was was you know was obvious. It was blatant right in front of the official. But the communication between this crew and the way that they're setting the ball and allowing the flow to go through is just this is a kind of it makes a game you want to watch. Third down and ten. Capetta back to the air. Going to roll left. In trouble. Fires near the stick. Mwangi, the intended target. Did they're he hang gonna on? They're going to give it to him. Oh, he hung on. It's just a matter of whether he was inbounds. And they're going to say a complete pass. We heard it from Sherm. 
Sherm, longtime announcer of Exeter. What an awful nah, it's good guy. complete, Steve. They're going to bring it back over to the oh. original line of scrimmage. Oh. Fourth and ten. I saw a ref grabbing the ball on the sidelines at the point where he went out. So right. I, it's I, t- I, tough to tell, and that's on the opposite. Right. Extreme it, opposite end from where we are up here in the booth. Looked like but. he was lining it up. So it's fourth down. They're going to have to punt here. Yeah, good job by Bleakley. Knocks yep. that to the ground. Incomplete. Ex- and a three and out is forced by the Blue Hawk defense. So... Exeter still with enough time here to maybe do some damage. Yes. Just over two minutes remaining. Wongi, good punt again. Fair catch, called for and made by Detour at about the 48-yard line. So Exeter with a shorter field here. That was a shy of series. midfield. Going to get the ball back. Coach Ball with two timeouts remaining and 2.05 to go on the clock. Yeah, all Timberlane really needed was another 15 yards or so and one first down within that, and uh, they could have controlled the football probably to and, – and, and uh, uh, but so they're going to have the defense is going to have to sp- they have to be a little fatigued at this point, Nick. Um, Exeter has dominated the yeah they have time been on the field. Possession. Do you keep that in the back of your head the time of possession because you keep everything else there? <laughs> well, speaking of stats, highlights, and analysis, we we'll bring all that to you at halftime. Coming up here I knew at you'd the halftime break, I knew you'd plus make of cake course out the, the on-field action with the bands. Both bands are here, and both are considered two of the better bands in the state is rug not going to find much on that inside carry second down and 10 coming up clock continuing to tick now inside of two minutes plus a look at halftime on what's going on over in londonderry lancers and tomahawks squaring off in the other quarterfinal this afternoon the winner there gets to face pinkerton in the semifinals these bands are entertainers we saw it with kimber lane a couple weeks ago what a terrific job they did in the stands Pafford, roll out. Going to throw. Graney coming back to the football. Couldn't pull it in. The tight end trying to fight off two defenders. Yeah, Trey Baker's having Baker's himself. Baker's in the area. I'll tell you, this guy is everywhere on defense, and they wouldn't be within one score if it wasn't for Mr. Number 3, Trey Baker. He has done a fantastic job, and he's improved throughout the game. Look at that defensive work. That's just staying with a very difficult tight end with a large radius to cover. Trey did a great job there. Third and nine officially. Very important for the Owls from their perspective to get in that cl- in, in the clubhouse or, or, or in the locker room uh, with a 14-7-1 score game. Looking for a third down stop here. Pafford back to the air on the play fake. The rollout looking, looking, looking. Going to avoid Langlois. Get a key block, pick up a first down and step out of bounds. In Owl territory at the 38-yard line. A 12-yard pickup and a first down. What he does with a football, obviously, he doesn't have the speed of a Lamar Jackson. But a lot of things that Lamar Jackson does is what Pafford is doing here. He looks downfield and fakes as he knows that he can run. Pafford can run the ball. We saw that up in Dover when he decides he wants to run. He can lower his shoulder let yeah. you have it. And uh, I really like the way I, I love high school quarterbacks rolling out. That's no secret, Nick. And Pafford makes the good use of it, and his mechanics and, 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 the, and the, the tools that he uses really makes him effective. Man a man miss. Yep. First and 10. Exeter with a minute 13 remaining. Inside rug. The truck for a couple of yards to that right side. Not much. Stuffed by Zimbrowitz. And now. Timeout number two on the way from Exeter. Coach Ball electing to stop the clock with a minute five remaining. Well, I think he knows he's got a great kicker. He's got a great leg. We see it every kickoff. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, with with the wind, it looks like it's moving away from us towards the right corner of the field. Uh, So it's certainly not against him by any stretch. I think he's looking to maybe get another 10 or 15 yards and take a shot and make it a two-score game. Not not too stiff of a wind either. No, it's not. It's definitely present. It's workable. Right. It's... It's workable. It's a good word. And Ethan Moss, as we know, has been already impactful here in this first half. Two touchdown catches, a couple of extra points to his credit as well. Blue Hawks struck gold on their first two drives, both in that first quarter, both lengthy clock-killing drives, capped off from touchdown passes. Pafford to Moss, 4-7 and seven in that order. Second quarter, Timberland on the board through the air in their own right, a 36-yard mm-hmm. hookup. Yep. From Pafford to Mwangi on drive number three. But the comparisons to last night's game in the flow and the response of the away team is almost 
almost the same. Identical. Identical, really. Right. Uh, and uh, and you look at, you know, Timberlane, they come out, I mean, uh, the Hawks come out with 14 quick points, and that's the same thing. I mean, that, we've got a lot of time to go, but so far. Second down and eight. Out of the timeout, Pafford under center, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, steps up in the pocket, now flushed out to his left. He's got a man downfield, catch made by Moss inside the 25. Wrestled down by DiGiulio at about the 24-yard line, another first down for Exeter. Clock frozen for the moment with 57 seconds. Watch the scrambling here by Pafford. It's, look, look at this, look at this. His lateral movement side to side and his ability to weave. The whole time looking downfield, that's really a gift, and he stops the clock there. You're going to spike it here on first and 10. Yep. Coach Ball still with one timeout, but is okay with second and 10 coming up here with 51 seconds. Nice piece of, uh, of quarterbacking right there. He knows exactly what his coach wants because he comes off for about, what, 70 visits a game. And, uh, yeah. th and that way you can manage the flow from the, from the coach. And Pafford seems to, to have a great relationship, as does Capetta with Fitzgerald. But uh, this, this duo tonight is uh, doing a great job of knowing exactly what they want to do. I would expect here a short, a short pass or maybe a, maybe a run, but likely a short pass, six, seven yards. Second down and ten. Yep. Capetta on the rollout with room and time. Going to oh. throw. He's got Graney inside the five, but it's incomplete. Woo! That right side, they have been rolling uh, Evan out, and he's so hard to bring down and to catch. He's able to get to open space. He knows, never takes it off. Oh, look, great camera work there. Wow, what a fantastic job, Matt. I think Graney may be kicking himself a little bit there. Matt, yeah, I think so, too. That was a probably a catchable ball. We're going to see it here. Yeah, catchable ball. Looks like you get the left hand on it. It does. It does. But either way, Timberlane's going to have to stop it two more times here. You know it's four down territory. Yes. 45 seconds. A third down and 10 coming up at the 24. Five-man front for Timberlane. Long count for Pafford. Takes the snap. They go to the ground. Left side, it's Moss. Weaves his way inside the 20. Where he's taken down by Zambrowitz at about the 20, no, the 16-yard line. Well, they have time to run one more play. It's about if they, two yards shy, Steve. Fourth and two on yeah, the Yeah, if they move it, they're a little in the decision. Looks to me like Coach Ball's going to let it go and probably going to take one more shot. He's got one timeout. The clock tick, tick, ticking down to 20 seconds and counting. I think Coach Ball is going to set up maybe one final kick would be my guess. Bleed the clock down, use the timeout, and then with a little time remaining, go ahead and kick just, the field goal, take a 10-point lead at good as his offense is playing, Nick, that's the three-point seems like a lot more doable thing at this point. You're on the left-hand hash mark, and if you're going to have the win behind you, that's where you want it. Here's the timeout with five seconds. And here's the timeout. That's exactly what I think, he's I think the do. bottom line is they want the two-score lead. Yeah. No, uh, why wouldn't you? Right. In a, all of a sudden, you know, it seemed like 14 quick points, Nick, to get, you know, run up quick. And then all of a sudden, exactly like last night, the defenses begin to lock down on both sides, and it's a little more difficult to move the ball. So last night... Uh, that game, we were blessed. We, you know, remember the the rain that came in literally two minutes after the end of regulation was just uh, pouring rain. But we were able to get through it with uh, pretty good fortune. But today has been a real blessing to have a, gay, a day like today. With yeah, you mentioned last night that was BG at Pinkerton. Yeah. Astros got out to that early 14 nothing lead. And then we were able to fight off BG in the second half and hold on to a 14-12 to victory to advance to the semifinals. Astros will take on the winner of Londonderry and Merrimack. That game underway right now. We'll get to that score update at halftime. All right, here we go. Moss set to try a 33-yard field goal to give Exeter a 10-point lead at halftime. It's from the near hash. Snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up and no good. It's going to fade to the right and end up wide and short. No good. Timberlane is left with half of a second to go here before halftime. If you're Timberlane, you've got to be really, really pleased. Given the, the way that this first half has gone with six point, what, point six or six seconds? Point six seconds, not even a second, Nick. They've got to be very pleased. Going off this field, knowing that they've been getting stronger as the half goes on and been, been a little more even, this defense is going to get an opportunity to rest, and most importantly, 
that's going to be some uh, receiver and passing defense adjustments on the field that are going to have an impact. Exeter, is, Exeter is slated to receive the kick to begin the third quarter. See what Coach Fitzgerald wants to do here. Basically the last play before halftime. Does he want to just take a knee or is he going to try and take a gamble? Boy, I'd be I'd be in, going into going into the locker room thrill. That's a, oh, they're going to do it. Capetto, one more play. Clean pocket, going to show off the arm. It's deep downfield, and it's incomplete. The intended target was the sophomore, Matt Williams. That'll do it for the first half. Exeter got off to that hot start, 14-0 after the first quarter. Timberlane gets half of that back in the second quarter. They get on the board, and it's 14-7 at the break. Both excellent bands coming up at halftime, folks. Enjoy. Yeah, we're going to bring you that live down on the field in just a few moments, plus a full recap of the first half. And a look at the Merrimack Londonderry quarterfinal, yep. which is going on right now as well. Halftime, Exeter out in front of Timberlane 14 7. You are watching coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Division I football tournament right here on Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. It's presented by Beals and Jones. Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. I'm Travis Kelsey, and this is Zen Water. The perfect alkaline water for sports hydration and the only water that's in a bottle that prevents ocean pollution. Ultra pure alkaline water in a bottle that prevents ocean pollution. Why would you drink anything else? Seriously, why would you drink anything else? The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school varsity and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams so play with the best the new hampshire tomahawks showcase and development for college lacrosse visit new hampshire tomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com how can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. Don't waste another season. Raise more funds than ever before and become another football program in New Hampshire that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit MG sportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today.
Halftime here in Exeter. Blue Hawks with a 14-7 lead over Timberlane here in this 2022 NHIAA Division I quarterfinal. Exeter on the board looking sharp in that first quarter. The key combination, Pafford to Moss. The first came from four yards out, the second touchdown from seven. That gave the home team a 14-0 lead after 12 minutes of play. Then in the second quarter, Timberlane... He got a kick start, seemingly on offense after a couple of three and outs in that first quarter. They move the football and they cap off the drive with a 36-yard touchdown pass from Dom Capetta to the wide receiver, Jaden Mwangi. 14-7 at that point. Exeter a chance at the tail end of the half to add three, but the field goal attempt from 33 yards out is no good. It remains a one-score game, Steve. At halftime, 14-7. Exeter, by the way, set to receive the kickoff to begin the third quarter. Yeah, most importantly for the Owls, though, they were able to get out with still within one score. And when you look back at that half and the domination of defensively and most importantly offensively by the the Blue Hawks, uh, uh, the, the game could have, if it wasn't for Capetta, just thrown an incredible cross-the-field pass deep, deep, deep with maybe about a yard and a half separation and hitting him right on the nose. That play is what's put them in this situation. If you take that play out of this game, there really hasn't been a lot of offense uh, by uh, the Owls at all. All right, you ready for some scores? I am. Steve? I'm ready. We are going to begin with the Division Four championship. Okay. Between Newport and Summersworth. Summersworth holding on to a 7 nothing lead over the Tigers at halftime. We've got a tie game in the Division Three championship as well. Whoa. Trinity and Campbell. Even at eight apiece, eight eight. Wow! Trinity and Campbell at halftime of the Division Three Championship. Got a D two semifinal to report. Guilford Belmont doubling up Sauhegan at halftime, twenty eight to fourteen. Yeah, that's that again we'll talk is the D two semis. Yeah, that, wow! And then perhaps the biggest surprise yet in the other Division One quarterfinal, 
Halftime in Londonderry, defending champion Lancers do lead, but it's only 7-0 at halftime over Merrimack. So the Tomahawks are hanging around on the road down only a score against the Division I defending That's champion Lancers. That's pretty incredible. Uh, there are some people in within the FNL and H group that uh, uh, are very high on the, what Merrimack has done. I think the whole state is really impressed with what he's done. What that tells me, Nick, not so, is, is the defense must be playing strong, but my guess is is that Hyde's been able to uh, run the ball effectively to move the sticks and and, and keep, keep the, the offense away keep the yeah. way from the ball. You are not you've got to keep the ball away from Drew Heenan and crew because they're going to sc score you. That would lead me to believe why that's the case. He we saw against a great Bedford defense how difficult that man was to stop, and you got to give. Uh, uh, Coach credit over there at Merrimack. What an incredible job Kip Jackson has done yeah. uh, with this team. And it's not over yet. No, still a half to go in Londonderry. But again, the Lancers, a 7 nothing lead over Merrimack. The winner will face Pinkerton in the semis next week. And, of course, still a half a football to go here at Bill Ball Stadium. Exeter, a 14-7 lead over Timberlane. The winner here will host Bedford next weekend in the semifinals. The Bulldogs got it done on the road against undefeated Nashua North, beating the Titans 7-0 yesterday afternoon. Well, we always talk about adjustments, Nick, in a game like this, 14-7. Uh, uh, you've got a team who, uh, from Exeter, probably would like to have at least a two-score lead given the performance of, of their output. They've done nothing wrong. It's just the way the game has gone. Uh, the missed uh, field goal would have uh, done that if, it, if they were able to get that at the end, but this is really on the owls, uh, as far as I'm concerned. This was, what adjustments are they going to make to try to contain Pafford, uh, not only in the running game, but equally, if not more importantly, continue what they were able to do towards the very end of the, of the second quarter and start to control that rollout to the right, passing down uh, the short passes with a couple of uh, two or three receivers uh, flooding the zone. That has been very effective and it's kind of been a backbreaker. As far as the running game, Nick, it's all about the defensive line doing a little bit more of what they did in the second quarter than the first, but it's still a problem, and the offensive line of Timberlane has got to start firing off to the ball with the sort of vigor that we've seen them play all year long and the physicality that they normally play. I would imagine that Coach Fitzgerald, good a coach as he did, did everything in his power to try to get these guys uh, uh, corrected in those areas with his staff. Reminder, Thursday... Got a brand new FNL Gridiron show for you. We'll break down the quarterfinal round. We'll preview the semifinals in Division One as well. And that's not just you and I going back and forth. We have exclusive interviews with coaches, players, and media members. Again, that's live every Thursday, 6 o'clock Eastern. And any time really after that, archived up on our YouTube channel, FNL NH Media on YouTube. Again, FNL NH Media on YouTube, and while you're there, if you have not already, hit the subscribe button, free to do so. You're in the know the rest of the way. And, of course, we got basketball season on the horizon this winter as well. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon. You'll be notified in real time moving forward. Again, Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, on YouTube at FNLNH Media. Nick Anastas, Steve Beals with you this afternoon, and the rest of our Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire crew. We're presented by Beals Insurance. Exeter trying to get back to another semifinal. It seems to be really the benchmark year in and year out, no matter what the year, no matter what the division. Exeter is on that short list. And now, Steve, just a half a, half a football, I suppose, away from another trip to the semifinals if the Blue Hawks can hold on. Yeah, one of the things that we're seeing from Exeter is they are able to do, I think, everything that Coach Ball want to do. I know, knowing him, the, 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 the game inside the game and the, and the sort of intricacies that he studies the game with, he wanted that field goal, I'm sure. Uh, but um, other than that, you got to give Exeter a lot of credit. They've just controlled the time on the clock. All the things that the Blue Hawk offense wants to do, they were able to do. So and You see um, an Exeter fan with a piece of memorabilia there, an old... Exeter hat. Looks at least 25 years old. 25 key number as we know. That was the first Exeter championship in a while. And the first under Bill Ball. That, yep. that anniversary team from 97. You're going to get together in the next couple of weeks I understand. And uh, as good of a reunion as you can find I suppose. 
So we'll see what happens here on kickoff. Blue Hawks will start off with a ball, Nick. Very interested to see how the defense of the Owls is going to react to that running attack that's uh, just been able to... Uh, yeah, the, this, this series may be telling yep. for the rest of the way. Meanwhile, Harrison Bloom, the senior, going to swing that right leg. It's a line drive. It's going to take a bounce. It's handled by McGinley, one of the up men. He's across the 40 to the 45, and he lowers the shoulder to about the 47 before he's stopped by Paris. That's a good return. And another short field to begin here for Exeter, first and 10 at their own 48. Well, it took a great bounce for McGinley to stand up. Didn't have to bend his knees or anything. It came right to him, so it's a game of bounces and inches, and and uh, that right there is not really where Timberlane wanted to be starting uh, on the field. I'm surprised that they didn't kick it a little deeper there, and if you are, McGinley would not be the guy that I would kick it to. First and 10, the 49 officially. Another five-man front here for the Owls. Got a wing back near side. Instead of the straight tee, they hand him again, Lee. And he's going to be spun down. Hard guy to bring down. About five, six yards later. Tackle made by Langlois. Well, McGinley, one of several ball carriers for Exeter in that first half. Not just today, but really all season long. We've seen Desmond Rugg handle it. Michael Detour had a good game today, Rudd. Yeah, yep. Aiden McGinley, and of course, Pafford himself, a threat to run as well. No doubt. Second and two. With Pafford doing a great job of shielding the ball. We'll see if that continues. Moss is the wing near side. Graney the tight end near side. They toss. Rugg looks to shake a man at the 40 and get inside the 39-yard line before he's stopped by both Paris and Baker. That's another first down for Exeter. Seeing some hanging helmets over there in the Timberlane defense, Nick. And uh, you've got to fight it. You, 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 you have to uh, play with a sort of that uh, sense of desperation. Sense this of desperation right here. Do and, or die uh, for the seniors. A lot of veterans hoping to extend their careers at the high school level at least another game. Long count for Pafford on first and ten. It's Moss left side. Zambrowitz going to put his arm around him, drive him into the turf after only a gain of a yard. Well, here's an example here. When your offensive line is winning the line of scrimmage and the defense does a good job of, uh, of controlling the gaps, they still get, uh, what, uh, uh, probably, what, two yards on it if we see this. It gets two in the end. Yep. Down but to the 38-yard uh, line. I, I, I can't. I still have to say, Exeter's still controlling the line of scrimmage here, and advancing every play. Second and eight. McGinley, play fake, roll out, looking low, incomplete. Throw hit the turf. Yeah. Graney, the intended target. Baker, right there. Third and eight coming up. Graney did a heck of a sell job on that. To, uh, looked like he had it from <laughs> underneath, but uh, he didn't have me. Coach for, uh, official pressure was right there. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah, we're going to see it pretty good here. I believe that's only the second incompletion yeah. for Pafford today, Steve. The first was a spike yeah, to stop he, the clock. The mechanics the on that quarter. one, he, yeah, he just kind of pushed it instead of threw it, uh, trying to thread the needle, so to speak. Third and eight. Owls hoping for a key stop here. Back to the air. Pafford on the rollout. Paris in his face has to get rid of it. Oh. It's tipped incomplete. And Baker. who else? Gets his left hand on it along the sideline. Graney, the intended target. Fourth down on the way. Trey got the memo. Yep. It is time to play today, and he's having himself a great defensive game. Uh, he's really, with, without Trey Baker today, the score wouldn't be 14-7, Nick. I can assure you that. He's done a terrific job. Uh, and it looks like, got to give uh, the Owls credit. They, they, they did make some adjustments there, and they're reacting better. Exeter going to punt for the first time here on fourth and eight. Baffert boots this one straight down the middle. It's going to land in the end zone Boy, for he a can, touchback. He can punt, can he? We saw some punts last night from uh, from Jacob, Jacob Baker. Jacob Baker, BG. Yeah. A BG and, uh, and had some real hang time. Had some hang time, some distance. Yep. Looked like a college kick. Uh, that one wasn't too far off either. That was, uh, well, another long field here for Timberlane. Kind of strange. We, we have quite a bit of... Wind up here comes swinging into the open window, but the flag is still as can mm. be. Kind of odd uh, swirls here, really unpredictable. So Always tricky wind-wise here in yeah. Exeter. Yep. But overall, I don't think the wind is 
no. too big of a factor this afternoon. Big hole on first and 10. Yeah, Quarterback going to slip through it on the right side. Spun down across the 25 to the 26 by Moss. But a big pickup. About seven there to set up a second down and three. Well, Capetta, as we talked about, a feel-good story for this unit. It was the freshman last year, George Schivel, who stepped in in his absence when Capetta went down. Ended up getting the Owls over the finish line in the Division II championship win over Milford. Capetta comes back, works hard in the summer, and hits the ground running as the day one starter his senior year and has not relinquished the job since. He's played well here this afternoon as well. On second down, it's he's not going to find anything on the right side. How many teams have we seen Timberlane this year be stop Capetta to the point where... Uh, not quite like that, this. Not Drew, quite like this. I Drew, agree. Drew Hanna comes up, absorbs the block, and then looks like it's Grainy, yeah, the Grainy first to get again. his hands on him, yeah. trying to rip that football strip out. It. Yeah, yeah Grainy is a... He, he's, he's a massive guy. He's got a lot of girth, got a lot of, a lot of strength. It's a lot of strength. Well, Timberlane, Steve, four possessions in that first half. Three of them were three and outs. Mm -hmm. And now facing a three and out here on their first drive of the third quarter. From their own 25-yard line. To the air, near side. Wongi complete in the first down. Yeah, nice pass by Capetta. Again, a lot of quarterbacks will do a, a good job passing downfield, but Capetta can really lead well, the outside pattern it was, just extremely well. It was Coach Ball who Corner think, routes. commented on Capetta's ability to throw that eight-yard out, Yeah, and we see yeah. it there in a crucial time. Threw a 40-yard out <laughs> yeah. on the opposite end, running the opposite direction. The arm strength of this young man is just uh, something else. Uh, but, boy, that was an important first down for them to maintain possession. They've got to... They try to at least change the field position right. side of things. They avoid the three and out. They go to Corman. He's got a hole right side, and here's the freshman. Wow. First down and then some. Inside Exeter territory down the far sideline. One He's man going to in. beat. He's in the end zone. Wow. For the touchdown. What? The a freshman, of Liam Corman. Turning on the gas. Owls crowd going nuts over there. A 68-yard touchdown run, and the Owls are an extra point away from let's, tying the football game. Let's, More importantly, Evan Pafford shaking up on the play and walking off with a limp here to the Exeter sideline. Yeah, boy, if, if we could go back with that replay one more time, I'd like to really see, if possible, after the kick maybe in between, we can take another look at that. Uh... And this kick is important. We saw how important they were last night, Nick, the twos and the ones. Uh, point, here's, here it is, the replay right here. Well, we'll get the extra point yeah, in Yeah, let's get the extra first. point in first. As here Bloom we go. tries to tie the football game with his right yeah, leg, right and he will. Wow, 14, Nick, what a turn of events. 14-14, a 68-yard touchdown run by Liam Corman. Remember, Corman got off to that hot start. The freshman, he scored seven or eight touchdowns in the first month of the season. Here we go. I want to see if there's over-pursuit here. Look, look, he just scrapes along the sides, and then he's got that breaking speed once he gets out there. Look at the lane he, sh he shot. Perfect lane to get into the end zone. He created separation from the defenders coming down, and as 26 there was coming in, he, it Ethan was Moss. Ethan Moss, who's a good player in himself, uh, he was able to get in the end zone almost, if not untouched. What a big play. Boy, ground and pound and play action down the field, take off six minutes. And then when you look at the Owls' uh, 14 points, Nick, big plays on both situations have tied the game up. Mm. Wow. 14 unanswered by Timberlake. And we are tied here with four minutes gone by in this third quarter at 14. The winner on to the semifinals to host Bedford. Bloom with a deep kick. High arcing, handled by Moss at the 10-yard line. The senior is across the 20. Make it to Torrey, not yeah. Moss. He's tackled shy of the 30. Timberlane's got a reason to fight right now. That's what you want to get your football team uh, at that place where now all of a sudden they say, hey, everything in the first half now, Nick, means nothing. Now it's a, what, 
eight and twelve. It's an it's a it's a twenty minute game left uh-huh. from here on in, yep. and the Owls have tied it up. You can see the energy, and it's getting cooler uh, as we progress in. So that's going to help uh, two way players uh, be able to maintain their win. Sixty eight yard touchdown run by the freshman. Wow, Liam Corman. Ties the game at 14. Exeter now with a response from their own 30. They go inside on first and 10. Is that the... Uh, That's McGinley, McGinley up to... Uh, you could tell. About the 34-yard line, a gain of four. Yeah. Stopped by a, a number of owls along McGinley's that McGinley's not front. meant to get more than 20 yards. He'll take it if you give it to him. But, boy, I'll tell you, if you want four, five, six, seven yards on first down, he, he's just a bull... And uh, loves contact, you can tell, and you give him anything uh, off the line of scrimmage, and he's going to extend it. Second down and six. Another long count. Another inside handoff. Rug going to power his way up to the 40 and pick up a first down at the 41. Think about this now. What a big first down that is. You have, you, you, now they've tied up the game. You have to respond and retake control of the football don't go three and out in that situation. Coach Ball knows better than anybody on the field here of how important that first down was to start th- getting things in motion. Recognize we've got a game here. It's, it's going to be a dogfight, but we got our best option is have our offense on the field. Brand new game. Yep. Exeter led 14-0 after the first quarter. Another five-man front for the Owls. First and ten. Toss play. Near side, it's Rugg. He's been the leading rusher this afternoon. Going to get cut down at about three yards downfield to about the 44-yard line. Second and seven. Paris, another below-the-knee tackle there for Timberlane. Okay, this is watch number 20, Matt Williams. Watch what he does if we can see it. He chases, chases the contain. Yeah, we didn't see it. Maybe we can get it from the other the other angle. They forced it up. up yeah, field, but, right? but you want to see a play. Maybe we can see it later. But uh, when you want to see a guy force the contain, that's what he did. And that's what created him to force the inside and made the tackle. Second and seven, McGinley, right side, prodding along. Stood up by Zimbrowitz in the hole. Not going to get much. Going to be third down. Big Boy, third Zimbrowitz, down. he's played well today. Yes, he has. Number 51 in white, playing with that that padding along the right forearm. Okay, here, makes a good tackle Watch there. number 20 right here. Chase up. See him contain? That forces 21 to go inside to make the tackle. It doesn't get any better than that. Yep. And, Nick, they were not doing that the first half on the contain. And that's why those outside runs were so productive. Timberlane trying to force another punt here. Thank you, Max. Uh, in the for third that replay. Quarter. Midway through the frame. Third down and four. The Exeter fans trying to give the offense a lift. Play action, little dump over the top, Graney the catch, it's a first down in Owl territory. <laughs> he does, he's an emotional football player. I love his attitude. He loves Exeter, you can tell, loves playing for Coach Ball, you can tell that as well. Big fella, goes back, hands the football, he's all business. He's been that way since the, since the game started. Watch this effort. He knows he, he knows where he wants to get to what game he wants to get to. Yeah, he dragged yeah. dragged both Williams and Baker. I love that. A couple of yards after the grab. Yeah, down to the Owl 47 yard line. High school football is about having fun and winning games and boy. He's, well, he he, he enjoys it out there. Graney's not the typical high school player. No, he looks he's like not. a full grown man down there. He's in certainly the playing like it. First and ten. Another five-man front for the Owls. Coach Ball watching from the Exeter sideline with his arms crossed. Not going to like what he sees here as McGinley is dragged down after only a yard. Langlois in on the stop for the Owls. It's a two-yard gain officially second and eight. This is what I like about Coach Fitzgerald. He does such a fantastic job, Nick, of uh, making adjustments at quarters and halves. And remember, they were in trouble there when they played Exeter before, right. and, and they came back in that game. So his, his ability to be able to assess and make adjustments has been really impressive to me solid coach second and nine officially and i'm sorry coach i'm still going to call you the ship captain once again here we go the step up throw catch made by rugs despite the hit he's down inside the 40 a couple of yards shy of that marker williams able to knock him to the turf but a good shorthanded grab by rug and pafford's kind of had a, a nice easy flow the first half let's face it but they're starting to get to him right now, and what does he do? He, a great quarterback responds to pressure, makes the right decisions in the pocket, and that's what really – look at this lateral movement by this young man, waiting for receivers, 
waiting for that flow to happen, looking for, for the when he's going to be open, anticipates that, and runs and passes to the spot. Huge play here. Third down in two inside of four minutes, third quarter. Game tied at 14. They're going to keep it with Pafford. He's going to look to run right side. He's got a first down. He wants the football that time. Able to twist his way down inside the 35-yard line. Certainly looked, Nick, uh, like it was a design play. And that allowed all of his blockers. It's kind of a student body right to a certain extent. We're going to see it here. He fakes the handoff. Puts, yeah. And that, look at the blocking that he has in front of him in order to be able to to drive that seam and get the first down and then some. All these Exeter ball carriers have been able to yeah. eke out that extra yard or two after contact as well. Impressive to see there. Well, the tail ends of his of his uh, blockers, Nick, have been over the line of scrimmage, and boy, that allows you to get that acceleration. Pafford, Sorry to interrupt. Pafford has seemingly got knocked around on the previous series, is okay, and obviously playing productively here on this drive for Exeter. The toss to Rogg, he's inside the 30. Another big pickup here for Desmond Rogg. This is, this is just this is just nothing more here than Nick the determination, and then the re, a, a counter determination, and then a redetermination. That's what football games I love the most is testing the will of all the players individually and collectively on both of these teams. Punch, counter punch, right? counter punch. You got it, you got it. Heavyweight fight here in the quarterfinals. Yep. Trip to the semis on the line. The winner will host Bedford next week. Final three minutes, third quarter. Exeter again on the march. Looking for the first down stick at the 24-yard line. They hand up the middle. It's Moss. He's got a first down and then some. Wow. Into the red zone all the way down to the 16-yard line. Watch the left guard here, Nick, on this replay. You're going to see a guy who's determined to win a football game. I don't know the number, but left guard over here on the right-hand side of your screen, taking on 51, completely turns that inside. Yep. Look at that. 59 back in and opens up a gaping hole. That's just great work. Number 59. Let's give him a... Sorry, I don't know everybody by heart here, but boy. It's Alex Ruska. Uh, sir, Alex down Ruska. There. What a terrific job. The production that Coach Ball is getting out of his line. Well, the 51 today is, is Drew, Drew Hanna, too, the senior, yep. is now the left guard. Yep. Play fake. Pafford. No. Error. Nice cover by Timberlane. His counterpart, Capetta, ends up on top of him. Paris in on the stop as well. Back yep. at the 15 yard line. Well, bend but don't break, right? That's going to be, it, it's not going to matter if they don't get a touchdown here. Uh, I think with a tie ball game right now, you'll probably see Exeter if they don't get a lot of yardage and we're a long way, cut two downs away from that. But it's going to be interesting, Coach Ball's decision where he is at this point, if they're not able to get a first down or a fourth and under two or three. Second and ten. Again, back to the T formation. Snap. They fake. No, they give it to Moss. He bounces off one defender, lowers the shoulder, and he ends up inside the 10-yard line very close to that first down. Yeah, got to get the wrap there when, you, when that hit comes in. Looked like the offensive line did a good job of tying up the defender. He wasn't able to get his arms out. We'll see here. Yep. Just slid right off the hips of his offensive lineman, and then into the secondary he goes. So Moley finally dragged yeah. him down. I thought it was like about a yard or two. They didn't get quite as much. Still was a good run, though. Third and three. Final 40 seconds, third quarter. Exeter looking for the first down stick down at the seven-yard line. They go back to Moss. He goes back up the middle, and this time he's, he's going to be stopped it. short. He might have got a yard. Swarmed. I'm going to say two yards left. He may have got a yard, Nick. That would Zambrowitz be my guess. over Ooh, there. Oh, they're moving Let's it up pretty the good spot. there. That's a heck of a spot right there, let me tell you. I'm going to spot it at the eight-yard line. That was a very, very generous spot right there. Fourth and a full yard, it looks like, on the way. Oh, uh, no. Actually, no. It's about two. It's about That's right, right, I think. Yeah. It's hard with this angle in the field. It looked and again, like Moss just kept going. Yeah. It looks to me about two yards replay. short, and that's exactly what it is. So It's going to do it for the third quarter. Timberlake comes back to tie the game on a 68-yard touchdown run from the freshman Liam Corman. Exeter, however, knocking on the door. It'll be fourth down and one when we come back with the fourth quarter action. You are watching coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Division I Football Championship. The quarterfinals here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. It's presented by Beals Insurance.
Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. All right, huge play to begin this fourth quarter. It's fourth down and a little more than a yard. Exeter with the football just outside the eight-yard line. Pafford is under center. Timberlake with five down linemen trying to crowd the box. What a big play. Snap, handoff, McGinley right side, first down, inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. Dragged down by Baker. No surprise there, Nick. It's going to McGinley. Paris in on the tackle as well, and the Exeter fans clap their hands. Uh, he's been money today. 100% return on your investment every time you gave him the ball today. The offensive line deserves equal credit in that whole situation. They gave him a hole. How about number 88? He's no, he's willing to block just as much as he is to, to, to make a, a touchdown reception. This guy is a, so impressive. It's Ryan Graney. Ryan Graney. Wow. Outstanding all season for Coach Ball, the senior is lined up top of the screen at the tight end spot. They follow him behind, and he's in the end zone. It's McGinley for the touchdown. Complete offensive line domination. You want to see an right side of an offensive line just fire off the ball with precision. You're going to see it right here. Big plays at big times in important parts of games, folks. You're seeing it right now by the Blue Hawks. Both of these teams, are watch the cave here. It's all backed up in the end zone. Number 66 and number 88. Out of the Exeter Blue Hawks, Nick. What a yeah. terrific job both of them did. Giuseppe Donorano and Eli Beam. Yeah. Yep. Again, part of this deep so many rotation names. up so front. So many names. Yeah. yeah, it's just. Yeah, Coach, he'll, he'll use eight, maybe even ten. Why not? Regularly up front. Here's the kick. Up and good. Moss, three for three on the extra point tries. Exeter jumps back out in front. 21-14. Nick, this game is... Uh, was you know obviously tied up by the Owls at an opportunity. Somebody is down on the field. Looks into bit quite a bit. I couldn't tell who the number was. It's a Blue Hawk. It's a Blue player. Hawk player. Don't know. We hate to see that in this time of year, but he's holding that. I believe his right knee. Is it Graney? No, Graney's on the sidelines. No, Graney's on the sidelines. It's not him. Well, reminder how we got here. Exeter looked very strong on both sides of the football in that opening quarter. They scored two touchdowns in their first two drives. Both hookups from Pafford to Moss. It was 14 zip after one. Timberlane on the board early in the second quarter mm -hmm. on a 36 yard strike from Capetta to Mwangi. Exeter missed the field goal at the tail end of the first half. Stayed out in front, 14 7, going into the third quarter. And then, just minutes into the frame, the freshman for Timberlane, Liam Corman, a 68 yard touchdown run. That tied the game at 14, and then just a moment ago here, first minute of the fourth quarter, it's McGinley from two yards out. And here we are here, 21-14. Meanwhile, kind of a hush has gone over the crowd here at Bill Ball Stadium. It's number 53. Good to see him up and on his feet. That's Beam. You just praised him a moment ago, the he junior did a guard. Terrific job. Uh, and uh, he is walking, but very gimpy on that left knee as he comes off. So they'll tend Hopefully to him. Hopefully he's okay. They'll tend to him on the sidelines. You get a look at Coach Ball on the home sideline. Concerned. Always has that game. But that's sheet. part of the reason why he rotates all those oh. offensive linemen in, right? You, so that well, I mean. Uh, the backup doesn't come in cold, right? Everybody's fresh. When I used to be, I used to coach with Paul Levine's son. We coached together, had a great time. But Paul always said, you're only as good as your weakest link. And Coach Ball, uh builds a program based on strengthening all the links in the chain. So uh, not only is there, there, there good ability to perform, but perform at a very deep level if you run into the injuries, which is very much a part of football. Here's a kick. Far side, handle on the hop. Mwangi going to jog out of bounds across the 35, where they spot him, 38-yard line. That's a good return. Similarly, we'll begin there. First and 10, trailing once again here, 21-14. Get a look at Mwangi there. He's been excellent as the prime kick returner today for Coach Fitzgerald. 
All right. Still plenty of time here. Less than a minute gone by fourth quarter. But I, yeah, I Timberlane think. has had trouble yeah. at times today moving the football. Exactly. Five possessions, three of those were three and outs. But when they need a score, they tie it up. They've done the other it. two ended in touchdowns. Yeah, right? so, I mean, what do well, you say? I mean, it, it, some of this, this team just seems to play each other close no matter what. Capetta on first and ten. Hit as he throws, oh! and it's intercepted. Ethan Moss able to step in front of Matt Williams and pick it off for Exeter. In games like these, this tends to be the linchpins, Nick, that change the paradigm of a game. It's a fourth-quarter turnover. Fourth-quarter turnovers are so difficult because it changes the momentum and the attitude of the team that gave it versus the one that got it. And uh, it's, it's the minimal amounts of time. Uh, that, that, that is a big, big interception right there. It's the game's first and only turnover. They were on Capetta. He had three. He got hit as he threw. He got hit as he threw. And then a great catch yeah. by Moss on the move, able to jump in front of the intended target. Williams, hang on. Yep. Moss, two touchdowns on offense, three extra points on special teams, and now an interception so on defense. in the fourth quarter, opportunity to make it a two-score game again. Let's see what Exit can do. Trying to make it a two-score difference. They go inside on first and ten and nowhere to go. Whoa. Meanwhile, extra yardage. No whistle. They let it go. I may have spoken too soon. That's, that's Moss on the carry, fighting for everything he can get. He ends up at the 38-yard line. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought we might get a whistle there. Let's take a look at it. If, if the pile keeps on moving, they're going to let it go here. And yeah. that's exactly what it did, and it was forward progress. Officials, officials got his whistle ready to go at the right time. Right. Did the right thing there. You can you, see Malachi you, Cologne, the nose somebody's tackle. Somebody's got to go low and bring him down. A little yep. upset with himself, I think. Yep. Had a shot at him in the hole, but in the end it ends up going for six yards. Meanwhile, back to work for McGinley. The big back on the lower the shoulder. Follow the right tackle down close to the 36-yard line. Still a couple of yards shy. A third and two on the way. Now two minutes gone by fourth quarter. Well, when you can run the football period, you're going to be a, you're going to be have a winning program. There's no doubt about that with any kind of a decent defense. But when you can run the ball in the, uh, uh, when you have a lead, no matter what that lead is, in the fourth quarter and maintain possession, that is a lethal dose uh, against uh, the the defending team because um, running the football just burns clocks yep. and to just in the fourth quarter demoralizes defenses. Timberlane has got a lot of heart. Let's see what they can do. It's been a heavy time of possession advantage mm -hmm. for Coach Ball this afternoon. Trying to keep it going here on third and two. They go got inside. It. That's close. He got it. I think you're right. That's Moss again. And they will move the sticks. Needed, needed two. They give him two and a half. And Exeter will huddle back up here with the clock ticking again. Yeah, ground game. You know, they call it ground and pound, and some people, uh, you know, one of the things about Exeter is, is and, and these style of offenses, the Pinkertons and such, you get a lousy day in the deep November where it's snowing out. Having that running game and is such an advantage, but turf has changed that to a certain extent. First and ten. Wow. Movement up front for Timberlake. Got to maintain composure in that situation. But, again, Evan Paffitt's as good as it gets. Just the second penalty of the day either way. They've been actually pretty disciplined on the defensive line against a very good cadence caller in Paffitt. They've done a good job, I'm sure. Coach Fitzgerald and the staff practiced that. Uh, remember he pulled them off sides last time a few times in the game. We saw it in Dover. Everywhere you go, you see it. Uh, yep. That when, when Paffitt's on the field, he, he gets that part of the game uh, – Gets a free five for his team here. Yeah, and that's a big uh, that's a big five in the zone in the fourth quarter. Clock ticking. Ball at the twenty-seven yard line. McGinley right side run breaks a tackle in the hole. Leans forward. I think he's got it. Goes across the twenty-five down about the twenty-three. Yeah, you can see who Coach Ball relies on when he needs hard, difficult yardage. You, you know, there's just some guys that can just read the right seam and have the power to drive it. He, he yeah. gets, the, he gets the, the really serious yardage that's needed at the right times. It keeps points in the game. Able to drag the freshman defensive tackle, Giuseppe Bonarano. Still a one-score game, folks, with eight minutes left. But Timberlane's got to make a stop. 
First and 10, Exeter hoping to get back in the red zone. Blitz up the middle. Hand off, Moss. No, they stay with Pafford. He makes one man miss. Spins away from a second. Shakes off Baker at the 10. Wow, still alive what an at the 5. Looking for the goal He's line. In. He's in. Touchdown, Evan Pafford. Wow. Able to drag half the Timberlane defense with him one way or the other into the end zone. And all of a sudden, it's a two score game again with now eight minutes remaining in regulation. And Pafford exhausted. On the bottom of that pile. Yeah, uh, who can imagine why it's the fourth quarter. He's coming. He's running about six miles during the game, coming on and off the field. And what an effort. The crowd is really going crazy for this young man. Let me tell you, now he's limping back. He's pumped up. I guarantee you that pain is just means nothing at this point. He's ready to go down and hold the football. Well, we saw him get nicked <laughs> up on defense on the yeah. previous Timberlane touchdown. We're going to see that again, folks. Earlier in the third quarter. But what a run there. 14-yard touchdown run. 27-14. Extra point try from Moss is high and good. Pafford, uh, I don't know if he's got a cramp. Looks to me like he cramped up. Well, they'll take a look on the sideline. Look at this, folks. Watch this run after. Okay, hit, hit. Kind of hit again. Hit again. And just drives himself. There's sheer determination of getting in the end zone. He's holding that that uh, that leg, that that leg at that time. I doubt very much you'll see him come back on defense in this situation, Nick. Keep an eye on 22. Good luck trying to keep him off the field, right? What a great run, though. What that's, a great run. That's one of the better runs we've seen all season. That's just determination. So 28-14. Big play of the game. I would. Four minutes into the fourth quarter. The Blue Hawk defense comes up with the interception, and then the offense turns the short field into a touchdown. A 14-yard scamper by Pafford, who was thrown for two touchdown passes this afternoon, now has a run to his credit as well. And to answer your question, Steve, they're stretching out Pafford right now on yeah. the sideline, stretching out that left leg. He was treating it like a cramp. He was pulling his toe himself, so that's a very good sign that that was just a cramp. Thankfully, for Exeter's sake, it's not. You, know, you just hate to see any of these young ball players in their career uh, not to be able to enjoy this, and it looks like uh, he's going to be okay. So, Kickoff. Timberlane down two scores again. Open for a response. Williams on his first return of the afternoon won't find the 30-yard line. Swarmed along the sideline. One of the Exeter special teamers got mm -hmm. to him. Dwight Beam. Not to be confused with Isaac Beam, but it's Dwight, the senior, who makes the tackle there. Brothers, right? 28-yard line, Timberlane. Starting to run out of time. Eight minutes even remaining. Need two touchdowns. I'd imagine Coach Fitzgerald may dial up a few more pass plays coming up here on this drive. Yeah, I mean, he's... he's you know, at this point, you got eight minutes left. You know, Exeter is going to try to burn the clock. You got to get it done. I think Capetta's arm in this situation, without post on the field, is the best option. A he hand to the to freshman Corman, and he's swallowed up by Hannah up front for Exeter. The senior has played well up front, showing you some of the emotion after making the tackle a couple of yards in the backfield, second and twelve. And, you know, the emotions of both of these uh, great coaches on the sidelines, Nick, haven't changed one bit. The score doesn't matter. These guys are all about playing to the three triple zeros are on the clock and the game's finished, and they're just all focused. Coach Ball, you don't see any sense of taking anything for granted. You don't see any lack of commitment or desire and will to still win this game on Coach Fitzgerald. That's why their teams are successful. Back to throw. Capetta hit. Oh, he took a hit. Complete. DiGiulio going to run away from a man, pick up a first down. He's got one man to beat at midfield, going to cross up near side Whoa! and get cut down at about the 45. The ball came out. I think I say it's on the ground. Yeah, great call by the official, clearly on the ground, which caused the fumble. You're going to see this on replay, folks. What a terrific call. These officials have been right on it. Yeah. You know, the fact that you don't even really think about them being there speaks to how good this team of officials is done today. Meanwhile, one of the oh Exeter boy. players involved That's in the Graney. collision is down. That's Ryan Graney, the defensive end. Right. And he apparently is having problems yep. with, with a, a leg cramp. injury here. 
Each team is going to head back to their respective sidelines as we get another look at that play. Sense a lot of pain there. Just he's kind of got that left leg stretched out. Yeah. Well, we've seen players both ways shaking up a bit. Pafford and now Graney here back to back in this fourth quarter. Yeah, he's. I think Graney that was a cramp as well, Nick. Boy, he is a Goliath big. Of, of, of a man, isn't he? Young man. Plays like you said, Nick. Doesn't play like a high school player. Plays like a college player. Well, you know, the, really. the guy that just was off the charts with that, I don't know if you remember, it was Dave Philistine from Central. He just played just, I mean, he was just incredible. He's just a beast on the field. Uh, but, you know, certain players just have that that persona and that uh, kind of that gronk feeling on, on, the, on the field there. Exeter is going to need him back sooner rather than later. Yes. Pressure, throw, Moong, he's got the catch at the 10, and he's going to waltz into the end zone for another touchdown. Unbelievable, folks. You are seeing two teams that will not give up, and competitors' velocity, the, it's, defenders don't believe he can actually make the throw, and he does it, and that's just what Coach Ball was talking about the other night, about the arm strength of this young man to go across the field. Look at this. It's almost, Look at that. What a great job there. A 45-yard hookup. Capetta to Mwangi. Mwangi. Second time we've seen that combination strike for Timberlake. But don't forget these extra points. They're critical. They're down eight here, trying to make it a seven-point ball game. They want this. Baker gets a hold of the high snap. Bloom's kick. They got it. Is straight down the middle. They just won't quit. you got to give Timberlake a lot of credit, Nick. They look like they're... Like they're down and out, and Capetta and his receiver, of course, but give that offensive line there a lot of credit. They were able to provide Capetta with clear uh, uh, a pocket there to be able to set and throw that football, and boy, did he get, uh, did he return on that favor for his team. Wow. So Dom Capetta. Listen to these bands going back and forth, the crowd, the cheerleaders. The, the environment here is just electric. Playoff atmosphere here at Bill Ball wow. Stadium. In Exeter. I love both of these football teams, Nick. It was such an honor to enjoy to play, to watch them down in Timberlane uh, at Owl Stadium there play. Uh, that game, which went right down to the wire, there's just something about the history yep. of these two teams. That, that, just, was, that was back in week five, a 27-23 yep. yep. last second win by Timberlane. All right, so Capetta able to atone for the interception by firing a 45-yard touchdown pass. Brings Timberlane back within seven. We're just inside of seven minutes now remaining in regulation here. Fourth quarter. Nick and Astis. Steve Beals with you. From Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Presented by Beals Insurance here. Quarterfinal round. The winner goes to the semis and will host Bedford. Kick from Bloom. High. Going to hang. Going to land and be caught at the 10-yard line. This is DeTour. DeTour going to weave his way to the 40. 45, midfield, and the kicker, Bloom, going to wrestle him down along that far sideline, but not before a big return fires up this home crowd yet again. Yeah, he said, remember, he, he ran the ball for quite a, he was a, impressive at Timberlane yeah. as well for giving them big plays. Got hurt that night. Yeah, well, the key here is he shoots his vector and he goes 100 miles an hour I I instead of dancing around. He, he just made one cut and went for it, and that's what you've got to do in order to get a team uh, a, 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 a kickoff uh, coverage team uh, mixed up, and that's exactly what or, or gets your best production out of it every play, and that's what he does. He runs the ball hard. Still didn't want to come down when he was on it, carrying him on his back. First and ten from the Owl, 42. Timberlane up for the task here. Yep, didn't let it happen As there. As they swarm the line of scrimmage, the inside run is shut down after only a two-yard gain. Pafford uh, looks like he's right back to normal now as far as his leg is concerned. So it looks like he's potentially available to run the football if needed on a fake. Yeah, you know these guys are going to sleep well tonight. Oh, yeah. Playing hard at less than 100% in an effort to try and get their teams over the hump here. We're midway through the fourth quarter. Boy, a dark, heavy cloud set has just come over the field. Yeah, it's kind of affected the lighting a bit. Yeah. Second and eight. Another long count for Pafford at the line. The pitch is to Rugg. Rugg looking for the edge. Williams gets to him. 
and flings him out of bounds where? At about the 38-yard line, yeah. just another gain of two. So third down and six. Timberlane Ooh. hoping to stop Exeter and get the football back. Watch here. Looks like he's got the edge. And look at the hustle. The closing speed there by Williams. Williams playing himself a good game today. Look at that hustle out of the gate. He says nothing doing. Now he's got his team in a situation with third and six where this, it's going to take a, a, a serious play to be able to get the first down for Exeter. But it probably is four down territory, I would imagine. here. Maybe not with the conditions of this game. Could clock, go either way. Clock ticking down to five minutes. Yeah. Third and six. Paffert. Fakes to McGinley, rolls right, throws. He's got Moss, but oh! it's incomplete. Could have been probably the pretty incomplete. Could have sealed it there, Nick, if they were able to get that pass. Well, he definitely would have had the first down. Oh, and Moss yeah. looking skyward in no, frustration. I don't, the, I don't mean the touchdown. It just burns so much off the clock. It would have required Capetta to have one of those, one of a couple of those hails that he's had that he's been so successful at. Instead, Exeter looks like they're going to punt the football on fourth and six. Wow, you've got to give the Timberlane defense an incredible amount of credit here. Pafford standing back at his own 47-yard line along the near hash. Takes a good snap. Gets off a low kick. It's going to bounce down the middle. May have hit one of the Exeter Gunners. Yeah, it should be stopped right there. It should be. Sean DeLello. They didn't see it. The officials didn't see it. They may be going over to talk to the other official there. Yeah, look, they're going to move it up. Yeah, he saw it. It hit him. And yeah, Timberlane complaining. Yeah. Yeah. And every yard counts. Yeah, the, the ref's going to... Uh, yeah, either either way, they're going to be pinned inside their own 20. But with again, less than five minutes. They're going to put officials. it at the 19-yard line. I just really admire this. you got to get it right. The officials work together. The official that made the original call did everything what he saw, and he immediately said, okay, I, I didn't see it. And they adjust to it. Now both teams are satisfied uh, with the results, knowing uh, that the officials communicated. What a terrific job they have done. I can't say enough. When you get at this point, Nick, you want good officiating. We're getting yeah. it today. Yeah, they only assigned the best. And we've seen, I think, only two penalties all day. Yeah, they just Well, these are two good, clean football teams right. as far as how they play, but the officials have not been looking for stuff. Right. And the laundry has pretty much stayed in the pocket. Well, that's how I judge the officials. Yeah, I <laughs> the know. less penalties, the better. I can tell he's a basketball player. Nick. Capetta around Whoa, the corner. What a hustle. And a lunge for that first down. Where, the, where will they spot it? Oh, I think he's going to get it. Oh, they brought it back. I still I think he may be. They're going to yeah, go. First yeah, down. He got it. Nice hustle there by good second effort by Capetta. He's a player. Showing you the dual threat. Able to do it with the legs. Nice block there. And again, able to outstretch. After being wrapped up by Delello, nice block by Jaden uh, Mwangi. First and ten. They go back up the middle. This is DiGiulio tripped up in the hole at about the 27-yard line, a gain of three. Well, there's no hurry here, Nick. It's about moving the sticks. There's no hurry because you don't want to give Exeter back the ball if you can tie it up. But uh, down to four minutes. Both teams, I believe, with all three timeouts remaining. Corman, the explosive freshman, going to fight his way close to the first I down marker on second down. Co May have ended up a couple of inches shy. Yeah, but good run. i got to tell you, Coach Fitzgerald must be pretty excited about seeing this man come up oh, the yeah. ladder here. He's only a freshman. Yeah. He runs with uh, ferocity and, and uh, a lot of seniors on the Timberlane roster, but... There are plenty of underclassmen who have been pivotal performing all season, mm -hmm. including Corman. Three and a half to go on third and short. Capetta, far side, dancing along the sideline, first down and then some. And then stops the clock out of bounds. They're going to where? Say he's out at the 49-yard line. I think you're right, 49, Nick. 49 yeah. it looks like. Yeah. Here's a, you'll see the replay. Capetta is playing his heart out. He knows how important this is. He's been waiting this, he told us, on Gridiron, our show on Thursday night. A lot, we had him on. He said this is a dream of his. You can see he's playing like it right now. Yeah. Yep. Played well today. Two touchdown passes, one interception. But these young men will never forget these moments. Spearheading the drive here. When that final bell rings. 3.26 to go. 
ball on the ground for a moment. Capetta picks up the faulty snap and, and makes gets four yards. Makes something out of nothing there. Ryan Graney, uh oh, who's back on the field. Capetta's down. Makes the tackle, and now it's Capetta who's shaken up for Timberlane. That would be really serious for Timberlane at this juncture of the game. Looks like he's in some pain. The senior on his back. Yep. Let's, I didn't see what happened there. Maybe we'll see it here on potentially on replay. Coach Fitzgerald's out there, obviously, to see him, and he looks like he's relieved. It looks like it's a cramp. Or maybe it was out of wind. I don't know. Well, he's still down there. He came down kind of funny, Nick. It, uh, not funny, but he came down kind of strange on his side. This could be. Yeah, he went right down, and the ball was under his belly. He got he got the wind knocked out of him. He That's got what that is. Planted there yeah. by Granny. Yeah, he's and gonna he's have up. to come out for at least a play. Yep. Uh, what well, they'll do? They'll, they'll probably wildcat it up, and. Um, run the ball with somebody. Well, remember, it was Shivel. George Shivel is now a sophomore. Came on in replace of Capetta last year during that postseason run in the Division II tournament. Coach Fitzgerald coaching his Shivel, tail off right now. And it's Shivel here as well as the quarterback. I really admire both of these coaches, Nick, the, the work that they put in and how it's like control. a wildcat look here. Shivel takes the low snap. A hand a over to Corman. Corman gets the corner. He's Corman's got, got oh. the sideline. No, they say he stepped out of bounds. <laughs> It, it, I'll tell you, I thought he was gone there. I thought he was gone, too. They yeah. mark him out, though, at the 32-yard line. Well, stepped out of bounds. We can't see over here. Obviously, a good call by the refs, but I thought it. What a very constructive counterplay right there. Good blocks up front. Yeah, what a terrific job there. So they got Capetta back There's in the game. There's a flag on the play, though. There's a flag down at the 45-yard oh, line this. of Exeter. Just the third penalty of the afternoon either way. Yeah, I mean, if and it's, it's going to be a hold against Timberlane. Yeah, I think they're going to get number 29 for holding. Now let's take a look at that again. We didn't know the flag was there if we can while they're marking it off, if it's possible. Um, I think they're going to get, thank you, uh, we're going to get a, a 29 here. Watch him out on the edge. There's two of them. You got 59. Oh, 59. There's a, there it is right yeah, there. It's, yeah. it's 59. Yeah, it's 59, with the not 29. That's Nick Langlois. Yeah, that's a good call. The yep. senior tackle. And it's at the point of attack. It right. isn't someplace 60 yards away. Right. It was right at the point of attack. These officials are right on it. All right. So that throws a little bit of a hiccup into Coach Fitzgerald's plans here. Absolutely. It's now second down and 14 Huge officially penalty. from the Owl 44-yard line. We're down at 2.57 to go inside of three minutes, fourth quarter. Timberlane trailing 28-21. Capetta. Floats it into the flat. DiGiulio with the catch. Down the sideline. Looks for a lead blocker. Cuts He's it got up. got a first down. After picking up the first down at the 40-yard line. How about Capetta willing to take a, a complete shot on himself in order to make that uh, screen pass work there, Nick? That, that That's just a player that knows exactly when to throw it. Look, at, he knows they're coming at him. He's kind of defenseless. Yep. And he makes gives DiGiulio at the very minute that he needs it. And good blocking downfield. Able to sacrifice himself done that repeatedly this season. Evan Delore on the stop. Meanwhile, Capetta back to the ground. Another flag is thrown by the referee. Tackle eventually is made inbounds along that far sideline, but another hold is called against Timberlake. I, I, I'll tell you, it's just uh, the, the first call was clear. You can't hold in these situations, Nick. you got to maintain your composure and recognize that a penalty is worse than a five-yard gain. Let's see if we can find it here. Uh, I didn't really see anything there. Uh, hard to say. That, the other one in our, in our replay. The other one was obvious. This one, a little more diluted. They're going to back Timberlane. Oof. After the hold is called, they're going to back the football into Owl territory at the 49-yard wow. line. So this is a first and 18. they got to get down to the 31. First and 20. From there on 49 down to the Exeter 31 is the distance. 228 and counting. Gun snap. Play action fake. They throw. It's deep down the far side. It's Mwangi again. Gets the catch on the run. And he's tackled down inside the five-yard line. Capetta is just unbelievable. Mwangi, give him a tremendous amount of credit for running his route and believing that his quarterback can get it to him. That is the reason that that ball was caught. And there's no flags. Look at Mwangi going down there. He never stopped and slowed his route. He says, that guy is his responsibility to get it to me. It's my responsibility to sprint my route, and that's exactly what he did. It's a go route, so you got to go. 
Look at the catch. Those two have hooked up from wow. 36 yards out for a touchdown in the second quarter. What a they football struck game. again from 45 yards out in the third quarter. And a big pickup there here in the fourth. Now it's Capetta on the quarterback keeper. First and goal for Timberlane. He's going to be stopped shy of the one-yard line. Well, why not burn the clock down here just like that? I mean, you're not doing it on purpose. You're trying to get in the end zone. But as a backup, it's a good call if you don't get the yardage, Nick. Second and goal from the one. Now the inevitable question becomes, if Timberlane is able to score the touchdown, do they go for two on the road and the win? Well, if you, you're a hero or a villain, Nick, when you go back home, one or the other. There is no in-between. Well, we'll see if they get in the end zone first. Second and goal from the one-yard line. Clock tick, tick, ticking down inside of 90 seconds. Capetta with Milwaukee. No, DeJulio right behind him. Exeter trying to stack the box. Long count here from Capetta. Well, there's no reason to, to speed it up. Takes the snap, calls his own number, looks for the quarterback sneak, and nope. he stops shy. Tried to find some room between center and left guard, but Exeter... Closes down the A gap and gets the stop. I, I totally, it, it, you know, you got two, you're going to run out of downs, yes, but what you can do with three timeouts is manage the clock any way you want. He's got three timeouts till regulation ends. I don't think he's concerned about the clock now. No, he just needs more to about get downs. in the end zone. Now right. it's about downs. The less time, the better on the other side of the touchdown is how I would play it. Yeah, oh, that's, a, that's what right. I'm saying. Yeah. So there from it is, the one yard line, another. Sneak attempt by Capetta. He's in. Another pig pile, and this time it's a touchdown for Timberlake. He's too big and too strong. You can't stop him on that second effort. A one-yard score by the senior Capetta. It's a one-point game inside of 38 seconds yeah, to go. Both these quarterbacks are committed. This is, again, watch Capetta on the second. He's getting the help from 54. Uh, just a look. <laughs> he put his hands up. He, he says, why not? Oh, what a game we've got here between these two fabulous teams. Back and forth, it's Ben Exeter, an early 14-0 lead. Timberlane came back to tie the game at 14 in the third quarter. Exeter, back-to-back -back touchdowns to open up the fourth quarter. You thought they were in the clear. Yeah. Instead, the last seven minutes have belonged to Timberlane as they have now scored two touchdowns. Coach Ball is going to call a timeout here. Yep. And stop. Well, the clock was already stopped, but he wants to talk to the defense with 38 seconds remaining. Well, does this give Coach Fitzgerald an opportunity to, th to, to drum up a play and go for two to your point, Nick? I doubt it, but it's possible. Remember, he, this happened the last game where Coach Ball called a timeout. He well, had to do it. I'm trying to find the kicker, and I don't see him in the Timberlane huddle right now. You I know, see Dom Capetta down on his knee getting a drink of water. But I don't see number 82, Harrison Bloom, the senior kicker. I go back to my favorite movie of all time, and I got some that are close behind it, but Gladiator, I love that movie when you, Prosimo says, are you entertained? And, boy, folks, if you're not entertained <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the Coliseum today, yeah. you, you, you've got an entertainment problem. Let me and tell and you, again, hats off to both these both teams. Both these teams, that's my point. Unfortunately, somebody's got to lose. But the thrill of being in the arena, ah. as Teddy Roosevelt once said, the man oh, in the arena. Won. I thought I had a good one with Prosimo there. Are uh, you entertained? I, but I had to top you it. Had to, you had to top it there. <laughs> Teddy. Yeah, you talk about a, a he, phenomenal he'd enjoy, American. He would enjoy this game. He'd love sure. this game. He'd be sitting over here. All right, the they're going for two. And why not? On the road, down by a point. Capetta calls his own number, takes the plunge, and ends up in the end zone for the two-point drive. Unbelievable, Nick. I can What? What guts? Almost... Almost a complete carbon copy, Nick, of the last game, and it looks to me, with 37 seconds left, like they've got a good chance to do the same thing again. We'll, we'll see what Exeter has got with 37. It's first. It's the first time Timberlane has led all afternoon. The Timberlane crowd here is an absolute shock, Nick, to be that. Watch Capetta plow through. What a bull. Wow. 29, 28. 15 unanswered points over the final seven minutes here in the fourth quarter by Timberlane to wrestle away the lead with just 37.8 seconds remaining. Coach Ball, well, he survived this kind of a game last year in the quarterfinals against Bedford, hoping somehow, some way, his team can get over the hump in the final seconds. I, I thought we had a to dandy. get back in the semis. I thought we had a dandy last night, and we did. But this is just unbelievable weekend that these four teams have given us the, the joy and honor of, of watching the expenditure of energy, fight, spirit, heart, all of it.
yeah. put together on all four of these teams. Don't count Exeter out yet with 37 seconds. They've got a hell of a kicker. Anything could happen here with a good run back. Two timeouts remaining as well in Coach Ball's back, back pocket. The kick from Bloom. High detour inside the 10. Cautiously makes his way out across the 20, tries to come near side, survives one tackle attempt, and then steps out of bounds across the 25. That's not what Exeter wanted. They wanted to get up around the 50-yard line, Nick, so a couple it's also passes. A, but you've got Evan Paffert as your yeah. quarterback. So well, Also kind of a lengthy return, Steve. Ten seconds 10 nearly. Ten seconds. It's normally six. Taking off yeah. that clock, yeah, that may have cost them a play. So to speak. Yeah, but Evan Paffert has got a uh, 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 he's got a lot of thrill in thriller in him as well. But 29 seconds, coach has got two timeouts. He can stop it once. Right. He can stop it twice, but I mean stop it once to try to get to a kick. Y you know they're going to go downfield, but Paffert's got himself a gun. Let's see what he can do. 73 yards between the line of scrimmage and the goal line. Trying to get into field goal range. The name of the game. Langlois is trying to flush out Paffert. The ball is on the turf. And Exeter does recover as McGinley gets to it. However, the Another clock is seconds. down to 19 seconds, and I think Coach Ball is going to have to use his second timeout here. He will. Exeter yeah, now left with one timeout. I think it was Langlois who may have jarred that one loose from behind in pursuit of Pafford. What a tragedy. Anybody has to lose this game, Nick. But what makes this sport so magnificent is what you expend, and you don't always get what you want. Isn't that in life? It's about getting knocked down, getting back up. Uh, You've got to give both of these teams unbelievable amount of credit. 29-28, no matter what side is winning or not, is really respective of, of the way that these two teams are coached and the way that they exemplify their performances on the field. They are a terrific group to watch. Anytime Exeter and Timberlane comes back to play each other again in the future. But we've got one heck of a game with 19 seconds left to go here. At this point, it's probably Hail Mary time and a timeout, right? Well, We'll see. Second Tough and to 12. put two plays together because he's only got seconds. one timeout, Nick. And That's the time problem. Out. Right. Pafford under center takes the snap. Play action rollout. Comes back to the near side for Moss. Capetta is right there on the tackle. Clock tick, tick, ticking down inside of 10 seconds. He now timeout. the timeout is called by Coach Ball with 10 seconds even remaining. And that is the Blue Hawks' final timeout. So now it's clearly, you know, it's Hail Mary time at this point, and then hopefully you get a second on the clock left uh, down to the wire. Uh, the, 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 blue, the uh, Owls, uh, Capetta, look at the uh, – he, he's just in shock himself it, it, at his own – not his own performance, but he's just – I can't believe we've actually been able to do this. This is unreal. And the effort that he put out. And they use him like a Mack truck going through the line. And how about number 54 uh, from the Owls, Nick? That's Cologne. That's Cologne pushing him in the end zone. It's just yeah. full team, team effort, effort there on that two-point It really was. Sure. All right, Exeter. With their backs to the wall. Out of timeouts, just 10 seconds remaining. Third and 10 on the way from their own 21-yard line. And Pafford just fumbled the snap. Fumbled the snap. Recovered. But Exeter is going to run out of time. And Timberlane is going to come back here on the road. Score 15 straight in the final seven minutes. And advance their way to the semifinals. Unbelievable game here, Nick. This thing, I mean, to control a <laughs> game, Nick. Look at the coaches running out, <laughs> absolutely ecstatic about the win. They deserve, deserve a lot of credit in the second half. I can't wait to recap this game with you, Nick, afterwards. Uh, but i got to tell you right now, uh, you talk about full control in a football game for, th uh, for three and quarters and about, what, seven minutes. Yep. But in between, they kept it within a score. I said at halftime, to go in at halftime with an opportunity to make adjustments, Nick, in that situation and only have to come up with one score to even it up. They, they got yep. the game behind them. But I thought that interception yep. was going to... They just then, don't give up. And then the sea captain dialing up the two-point try on the road. Yeah, we don't care. I, I, he's going to be the sea captain. That's just the bottom line. Call here. by the captain. Yeah, and it's the captain on the field, Dom Capetta, who gets them over the line. But a full team effort a there on that two-point try. A couple of guys you want to be like on a, the boat with for lo sure. Looks like a rugby yep. style play, and it works out for Timberlane 
Again, they erase a two-point, sorry, a two-score lead in the fourth quarter, down 14. They score the game's final 15 points and end up with a one-point victory. They are going to go home next week, Steve, and play host to Bedford in a matchup between the six seed and the ten seed with a chance to go to the Division I state championship. And that on game, I know you're going to tell me later. So do, do we need to go for a break here real quick? We're going to no. go for a break. Right. And when we come back, we're going to recap this Let's one in that. its entirety. And plenty of other action statewide. As we know, the other Division I quarterfinal between Londonderry and Merrimack closer than expected. Plus the D2 semis and the D3 and 4 championships to get to as well. So more on yeah. the way when we come back. Well, Timberlane, a winner on the road here in Exeter, 29-28. Owls on to the semifinals. We're on to the postgame show next. You're watching Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire's Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. I'm Travis Kelsey, and this is Zen Water. The perfect alkaline water for sports hydration and the only water that's in a bottle that prevents ocean pollution. Ultra pure alkaline water in a bottle that prevents ocean pollution. Why would you drink anything else? Seriously, why would you drink anything else? The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school varsity and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams so play with the best the new hampshire tomahawks showcase and development for college lacrosse visit new hampshire tomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com how can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. Don't waste another season. Raise more funds than ever before and become another football program in New Hampshire that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit MG sportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Well, we just wit witnessed an instant classic here in Exeter as Timberlane squeaks out a one-point win in the final minute to advance to next weekend's Division I semifinals with a 29-28 win over Exeter. Nick and Astis, Steve Beals with you here at Bill Ball Stadium. Most of this crowd walking away in silence, shocked after the home team surrenders a 14-point lead over the final seven minutes. Timberlane and their fans from Plastow over there on the far sidelines in jubilation following the two-point conversion that finally put their team over the top after Timberlane trailed most of the afternoon. That was their first lead. It came with 38 seconds. Exeter got off to a dream start. Really, they scored two touchdowns on their first two drives in that first quarter. Both were touchdown passes from Everett, Pass uh, Everett Pafford to Ethan Moss. It was 14-zip after the first quarter. Timberlane got on the board with a 36-yard hookup from Dom Capetta to the wide receiver, Jaden Mwangi. Exeter a chance to add points 
on the final couple of seconds before halftime, but missed a 33-yard field goal attempt. And the score remained 14-7 in favor of the home team as a result. Then midway through the third quarter, the young burner, Liam Corman, the freshman, ripped off a 38-yard, no, really good, a 68-yard. Really, really good point about 68-yard him. 68-yard touchdown run. He didn't touch the football a lot, but when he did, he made it, made it worth it. And that tied the game at 14, and that's where we were late in the third quarter. In fact, going into the fourth, we were tied at 14. Then Exeter retook the lead in the first minute of the, of the fourth quarter. First minute of what turned out to be a wild fourth quarter. McGilvery from two yards out. Extra point drive from Moss. Good. 21-14 Exeter. And then the defense turned over Capetta in the game's only giveaway. An interception. Set up Exeter with a short field. And Everett Pafford on an excellent 14-yard touchdown run. Extended the home team's lead to 28-14. to But then the final seven minutes belong to the Owls. Capetta showing off that arm. Finds Mwangi again on a 45-yard touchdown hookup to cut Exeter's lead in half, 28-21 at that point. And then on the final drive, Dom Capetta scores a one-yard touchdown. Timeout on the field. Timberlane decides to go for two. They keep it with Capetta. And the two-point try is successful Mm -hmm. as Capetta is able to plunge forward two yards and break the plane again. So 29-28 ends up being the final. Timberlane is on to the semifinals and will host Bedford in one half of the D1 semis next weekend. Yeah, I mean, when, when one of the things I felt, you know, you don't want to bring up during the middle of a game a situation where, you know, uh, you know that they're missing post a lot. I mean, clearly they missed that flair that they didn't have. They started using Corman, and this young freshman gave them the sort of uh, electric that they needed of that speed in the field and his ability to choose and, and, and run really, really mature lanes that he chooses. He's got that explosiveness. That, he's scary uh, three and years he's from now. scary three years from now. So <laughs> when you think about Timberlane, the future, and you look at post as well as Corman, I mean, you've really got something right there yeah. uh, coming up. But as far as uh, the, what really impressed me during this game beyond that was we talked about it during the break, Nick. Uh, we, t- we talked about a situation with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Capetta and his receivers running their routes full speed. That, it's so easy to just kind of say, you're running, you're running, you say, ah, he doesn't see me. He doesn't see me. And he can't reach me. He can't reach me. So, so I'm going to slow down and watch. And then all of a sudden, oh, he's thrown it to me. I've got to catch up to the ball. Right. The receiver, DeGiulio did not do that, uh, and, and any of the receivers did that, all, didn't do that all game. But let's, let's face the facts here. <laughs> Coach, Coach Ball came in the first half, and arguably through the midway through the third, he came through with a game plan that was absolutely all going Exeter's way. It had Exeter, Exeter win branded all over it. Then they got the interception at a key time. Who, didn't believe, who believed that Timberlane could pull it out? They pulled it out. It was just absolute heroic uh, play by, uh, by Timberlane. And I just give huge credit uh, to, to both these coaches, but I think Coach Fitzgerald made the adjustments that he needed to to keep it within one. Yep. But I, a last point I'll make, Nick, is that going into halftime and only having one score and not having that field goal was the difference in this game when you look at it at this point. 29-28 ends up being the final. Other scores, other tournament scores from elsewhere. I'll leave you, or I guess we'll start with Division One. Let's do that. Londonderry on top of Merrimack, 21-7 yep. with three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So looks like the top seed and defending champs are in a good spot to hold off the Tomahawks. Well, how about Merrimack In the season? quarterfinals, right. A win or lose today, it's been a, another successful campaign for Coach Jackson mm-hmm. and the Tomahawks. All right, after trailing in the D2 semis, 28-14 at halftime, Sauhegan has turned the tables on Guilford Belmont and now lead by one with two minutes to go. 29-28, sound familiar? 29-28, Sauhegan over Guilford Belmont in the D2 semis again with less wow. than two minutes to go Parody. in the fourth quarter. Parody. We have a Division Three champion, Campbell. Wow. 16, Trinity 14, the final, as the Cougars hoist the trophy How on championship Saturday. Congratulations so Campbell to Campbell. is your Division Three champs, and it's summer's worth. I don't In Division Four, a 14-6 final over my father's alma mater, Newport. Newport. 
Summersworth ends up with the champs as the champs in D4 against uh, Trinity 14, going six. into that game a clear favorite in, in, in that game as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and, and I think by Campbell's got a good wisdom, program. But Campbell's got yeah. some players that are dominant players. It looks to me like they were able to put them to use today. Congratulations yeah. to Litch, the town of Litchfield and Campbell High School yeah. for coming through on a championship. That's an, I'm sure things are rocking in Litchfield right yeah, now. Absolutely. And, yep. of course, we'll be back Thursday night to recap all of it with FNL Gridiron, presented by Beals Insurance, live at 6 o'clock every Thursday. We'll also preview, of course, the Division I semis and the Division II championship as well. We'll be joined by head coaches, media members, and players every Thursday at 6 on FNL Gridiron. Steve, your final thoughts. Relationships with quarterbacks with both of these coaches were just magnificent. To watch both of them work together as, as, uh, as, as coach and, and, and player, uh, and again, these these guys are 16, 17, 18 years old, right. uh, and and to watch Coach Paul and what uh, and and with uh, Evan Pafford and the game that he had, and obviously uh, second half heroics by Dom Capetta under the leadership of Coach Fitzgerald, uh, just just a terrific game plan adjustment by Coach Fitzgerald in the second half, and uh, I think they found a weakness in Exeter on that far corner. And uh, they were able to exploit it for 14 of, of their uh, yeah. of their 28 points. So I, 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 my hats off to both of these programs. It's going to be a tough locker room for Exeter to go in there. Uh, but I got to tell you, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. But both of these teams, I, I just an honor to come cover. They gave us everything that they had, yep. and I'll tell you, uh, I, they should never forget and, and, and never hang their heads once they get through uh, the emotional loss, Exeter, because that that was a hell of a football team. Yeah. Should be proud to be a part of this. Absolutely. For sure. All right, want to thank Bill Ball yes. over here at Exeter. He's what not just the head coach. He's the athletic director as well. His staff, which, of course, includes the great Chester Sherman, the public address man here, helping us out pregame as usual. Want to thank Coach Fitzgerald for joining us earlier this week as well, and Dom Capetta. Well, I guess we talked to, talked to Coach Fitzgerald a couple of weeks back. Yep. But he gave the green light for us to speak with his quarterback, so we appreciate that. And thank Dom again for joining us Absolutely. on Thursday. All right, for our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire crew, and I think I, again, forgot to thank him last night, so I'm going to lead off with the man behind the curtain yes. tonight. What a our job director, he's done. Ben Beal, spectacular job with that intro at the what a top weekend. of the broadcast. What a weekend is right. Always Johnny on the spot with the brief plays and, of course, has to deal with us, which is a job in its own <laughs> right. So we appreciate Ben Beals. Of course, his brother Matt. Doing the same thing, sacrificing for our behalf. Coming up on the long journey up from D.C. every weekend here the last few weeks. So we appreciate Matt's ongoing commitment. And his work down on the field has been spectacular. Speaking of, John Barron. Yeah. Spearheading, spearing the setup. Spearheading the setup. And He's also just amazing. Working the lens on, what, behind one of the end zones. Of course, up top, Kristen Beals. Great job, as usual. And it's all, of course, done in the spirit of Craig Incardoni as we dedicate the rest of the season to our departed friend, Craig Incardoni. For executive producer Steve Beals, my name Nick Anastas saying so long. Final score, final time. Timberlane 29, Exeter 28. It's been Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by the